beautiful campus of Virginia Tech. Oh, it feels like fall out there already. A cool, breezy day. Temperature just at 57, but it's breezy. There's been drizzles throughout the morning. And tough for the Miami Hurricanes coming from that kind of weather. Butch Davis in his first year as head coach of the Canes. Frank Beamer, the leader of Virginia Tech now in his ninth season. Certainly not happy with the 0-2 start, the losses to Boston College, and then last week's disappointing loss to Cincinnati. Virginia Tech won the toss. They have deferred. Adel Larson will kick off for the Hokies. College Town, USA right here, Mike. The opening uh, kickoff is always the most exciting play in football. And the Hurricanes have some good returners. Trent Jones and Tony Gator. And we're underway. Tony Gator at his own five-yard line. And quickly breaks the tackle, tries to get around. Excellent second effort. Gator finally knocked out of bounds at about the 31, but he broke a few tackles. And let's look at the Miami Hurricanes offense. Ryan Collins, of course, the starting quarterback. Jamie German, one of the most highly recruited players in the history of Miami, hoping to fulfill his potential. There's the offensive line. Casey Jones may be one of the best centers to ever play for the Canes. And it's a strong offensive line. Collins, the senior, he's getting his chance this year, Dick McPherson. I think this is the key right here to the fifth-year senior. He's been waiting patiently, had a year under the belt. Let's see how he plays today. That's the eye formation we talked about. Daniel Ferguson and Derek Harris in the backfield. That is Ferguson quickly a flag as Ferguson gets maybe a yard or two and a penalty marker on the first play. Cornell Brown in on the stop. Coach Davis said he was going to challenge the eight-man front with the eye formation and run it at it. He did the first football play. So our referee Al Hines will meet our audience right away. And apparently it's going to go against Miami. Illegal motion on the offense. Five-yard penalty, repeat first down. So not exactly the way to start. Again, the Canes have been out on the field for quite some time, and it is very cool, whereas Virginia Tech went back in the locker room, so they've got to get themselves a little bit warmed up. It's just going to be interesting to see how this affects Miami, because it certainly is weather they're not used to, but in my opinion, it can't hurt them at all, because uh, it's not going to cause them any energy loss. Then they open up the season with the loss to UCLA. But then took out their frustrations against Florida a and a couple of weeks ago. Collins will throw. Flushed out by Coleman. And the pass is incomplete. Intended for Strong. Let's take a look at the Virginia Tech starting defense. And it's a good one. And Cordell Brown, one of the best pass rushers in the nation over there at the defensive end. The linebackers led by George Del Rico, the captain of the defense. And in the secondary, Lauren Johnson, the freshman, starting in place of Antonio Banks, who's out with an injury. And he's a key player this afternoon. So a second and 15. Ferguson the call. Maybe breaks one tackle. J.C. Price quickly brings him down. And a good start for the Hokie defense. Getting the draw play, and I think Danielle's just trying to find his way and pick. There's no place to go. Very, very good, strong defense. And I think we're talking about some great defensive action here. Big third down play coming up, Mike. They, they see Virginia Tech defense. They have done a great job against the run. Miami wants to establish the run. So they're going to butt heads already. A long third down, third and 14 for the Canes. Fumble on the snap. Collins gets it. Brown quickly throws him to the ground. And a punting unit will come on for Miami, and this crowd immediately alive. That is not a bad way to start your defensive no, afternoon. I think against Miami, to get the encouragement to start like that is exactly what they want. I think Ryan did the nice thing, picked up the ball, made sure he got it so they have a chance to punt. Again, the field a little bit wet, and it's been drizzling. Mike Chrissy, the veteran punter. Larry Green is back to receive for Virginia Tech. Hope he's so great at blocking kicks. Keep an eye on that. And there's a beautiful kick, nice and high. And Green leveled right away. Trent Jones with the immediate hit. A flag thrown on the play. Yeah. Maybe one of those celebration penalties. 
No, I don't think so. I think he was just a little too close to the, the guy catch the ball. You got to give him two yards. I think that's probably much what happened. 43 yard punt. You might be right, coach. Oh, boy. Already two quick penalties yeah. against Miami. That negates some of that distance. Chrissy really got hold. With the opportunity to make a kick, make a catch, a 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first down. Yeah, I, I, I don't think that was a good call. The guy caught the ball. It's very, very obvious he didn't interfere. He probably was too close to him and made the hit, but he certainly didn't interfere with. I think it's a five-yard penalty at most. Well, they knock off 15. An excellent field position for Jim Druckenmiller. As they're already in Miami territory just exactly with the deferment what they wanted they got the ball on the positive side of the field only 49 yards to go 50 yards to go no pressure on the offense that they have to get field position they already have it nice job by special teams special still conferring and this is something that they did not see last week they had poor field position all afternoon against Cincinnati I think they're trying to go back to the five yard rule I hope uh, I would feel a lot better about it no not changing the thing. In our referee, Al Hines, this afternoon. Which Davis's argument will fall on deaf ears. And they'll start it off at the Miami 48 yard line. <laughs> Dwayne Thomas and Brian Edmonds, the setbacks for the Hokies. Here's Jackson Miller. Had a tough, tough week last week. Thomas gets maybe five or six yards, had a nice hole, and Dwayne Thomas with an impressive first carry. Ray Lewis in on the stop. A lot of poise by the, here we go, here we going with the ready offense. They're checking the defense, then they're going to call the formation, what they want to do from there. Very poised. I think they're confident right now. They've got to keep this up, and he's got a good security blanket where he is on the football field. So a five-yard pickup for Thomas. Second down. And Dr. Miller kicks it back after Thomas again. Breaks the tackle and knocked out of bounds. He's got the first down. Dennis Scott couldn't hold on, and Thomas able to get past the first down marker, a nine-yard pickup. Great call by them. And what I like about the whole thing is going to give Jim Drunkenbill a lot of uh, confidence because he really executed that option real well. He held on to the ball as long as he could in a nice pitch and a great run by Dwayne. Carlos Jones finally knocked him out of bounds, but they moved the chains. Ball already down to the Miami 34 yard line. This is exactly what Frank Beamer was hoping for. Their confidence a little shaken last week, but a good start was a must. Again, Dwayne Thomas, a huge hole. Another first down. Finally brought down by Eugene Ridgely, but Thomas is impressive thus far. 14-yard pickup. Boy, that is some hole, Dick McPherson. Yeah, I think that, you know, again, they gave the flow one way and cut it back. They had a nice uh, linebacker isolated Burgess, and he just wasn't ready to take on the whole thing. And excellent, you know, they've got excellent uh, selection here of what they're doing. They're very much poised in how they're handling. They're showing the shotgun, then walking up, shifting to the eye. And so uh, Miami doesn't have much time to react defensively. Again, Thomas breaks one tackle, cuts back inside, uh, met by a host of Hurricanes. Ridley in on the stop. Let's look at the offensive starters now. For Virginia Tech, Chuck and Miller, as we've talked about. Brian still did not play last week with a shoulder injury, but he is a big play receiver. Jay Hood, hey, good. Certainly one of the premier guys on their offensive line, and that is such an important part of today's game. They've got to protect and open up some holes, and they've done that so far. Interesting how they're going right after the middle of the, uh, the Miami defense. Second and five. Thomas, a real workhorse, and he's close to a first down, maybe a couple of yards short. James Burgess in on that tackle. Miami defense, the ends are terrific, especially Kenny Holmes. One of the best in the Big East last year. In the middle, Ray Lewis, the Butkus Award candidate for this year, one of the premier linebackers in the nation. And Carlos Jones, the only returning starter from a young secondary that's been inconsistent, certainly was against UCLA in that opening loss. 
of the first critical play in the game is a third down and a long run of almost two yards. They've gone into a double tight end offensive power versus power. Let's see what happens here. And Thomas has the first down with no problem. Wait a minute now. Look where they're marking it. It's going to be close. Well, Miami's starting to clap. It looked like he maybe had it. And they're going to bring out the chains. Looks like they might be short, Dick. Well, uh, I think you, you see where he lands, see where he comes through there on the thing. It's yeah, a good, he did it's fall. a good spot. He did fall. That is yes, a good, good spot. spot. There it is. He had that second effort, but good call by the official because after he hit the ground, and they give it to him. Boy, that is close. Now, I think when you have football plays, this sets the tone for the day. You feel awful good because you get the break, you get the first down, they don't stop. No decision in terms of the field goal right now. This is great for what's happening to the home crowd here at Virginia Tech. So off the good field position, they have moved the football very well. First and goal at the nine yard line. Looking to look, certainly changing the play. Thomas again cuts inside and gets maybe four yards. They're really running the football well yes, against this Kane's defense. Ridley on the tackle. They are running right or left by, by the set of the Miami defense. Now again, it's a checkoff by uh, Jim Druckenmella, just exactly what the coaches want. He's running away from the strength of the Miami defense. He's checking off, and uh, they're very, very effective right now. Great block for uh, Edmonds on Burgess to open up the hole there. So second and goal at the five. Edmonds this time, and he goes nowhere. Benny Fortney on the stop. No pick up there. Right. He's got to come up big. He's the guy that replaces Warren Sapp on that defensive line. They have not been happy with the defensive tackle plays. A lot of pressure on that young fellow. Well, you can you can see that uh, Virginia Tech is going right at the metal, just exactly where they're not happy with the defense. Very, very good offensive planning. I think the fullback there just had a tough read on the play and just couldn't get his feet going forward on the thing. You saw those numbers. Last two years that they've played them, they have not scored a touchdown. Three points last year, two points the year before. Jackson Miller himself, maybe a yard. Good defense when it counts now for Miami. James Burgess with the strong hit. So Frank Beamer with a decision. Well, again, the, an option play, tremendously well defensed. And I think it was a great call offensively because they put the pressure on the defense. And now we're going to see if we're going to go for the field goal, take the points while you're down in there was exactly what Virginia Tech is doing. And uh, they're going to try to get the three off the hash mark here. Again, I want to emphasize to everybody, it's not as critical as it was before because they moved the hash line in at about three yards. So I think uh, I think it's pretty effective here that we're going to get a kick. We've got trouble. He's 0 for 2 this year, right, Mike? 0 for 2. We missed him from... 35 and 26. This is a 20 yarder, but now we're going to move it back five yards on a delay of game. So it's going to be a 25 yarder for Adel Larson. Lewis says push him back. Again, you notice from a well coached football team, they, they don't mind losing the yardage here. They don't take the timeout. They keep the timeout. They'd rather sacrifice five yards than take a timeout here. It's no big problem. I think we're in still good shape for the kick. The young man has got to put it through. Crowd wanted Frank Beamer to go for it, but the smart move, you want to make sure you come away with points on this first yeah, drive. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You need to build a confidence if we're going to be playing against a team like this. And it looked like it got blocked. No good. They come away empty-handed. Strong drive with no points. Twan Russell appeared to be the man to get a piece of it. to see on that replay Dick it looked like it came from the backside so Virginia Tech falls short Miami defense with a strong goal line stand blocked the 25 yarder 
Now, uh, Larson is zero for three this year, but again, it's his fault. He didn't get the ball elevated enough at times, so they're able to leap up and block it. It's not a protection problem. It's solely on the kicker. That's the word that will be coming down to Virginia Tech. There's a nice block there, but by the same token, he's got to get it up in the air right from the goal. Juan Russell, you saw him on the inside, able to get his hand in there and block the 25-yard attempt. So now Miami will take over at their own 20. They did not move the football at all in their first series. They're trying to run it. Ferguson and Harris, the setbacks. Ferguson, the defect. And this was before the play. Penalty markers again. Looks like, the, again, we got a cadence problem because the right guard is offside. Uh, I think we've got a cadence problem. It's going to be first and 15 Miami. Dead ball. Full start. Offense. That's three penalties already for the Hurricanes. Not the way you want to start, Coach. Yeah, I think Ryan's the one that's got to calm down. It's very obvious when the, when this happens, the quarterback is not giving a good normal cadence. I think he's a little hyper himself down inside the 20 and the 15 here. Again, I want to emphasize the Miami defense did a fantastic job, kept them off the uh, scoreboard with the with a plus side of 50 yard uh, field position start. Collins to throw, fires. He's got Jamie German. And he breaks the tackle with plenty of room. Here's where German excels. And finally tracked down, but gets across midfield to about the 48. J.C. Price takes him down, but not before a 37-yard pickup. Now, again, this is what Ryan needs to get an, a good pass off. But again, what makes Miami? Here's a very normal 10, 12-yard play. And he's turning it all, all the way over to the uh, the plus 48. It's just uh, it's just what Miami does so well. Great athletes making big plays, which I'm sure that uh, Coach Butch Davis is going to talk about later on in this show. It's so important, Dick, for Collins to start completing some pass to take a little pressure off the running game. He did right there. He plus he got the field position he needed. A lot of trouble now. It's going to be a much more exciting offense you're going to see out of Miami. Harrison motion. Ferguson gets the call. Gets a few yards. Breaks a couple of tackles. And finally brought down. Lauren Johnson, a freshman, on the stop. Ferguson will be the workhorse. He's their leading rusher. There's his numbers so far. He's also their leading receiver coming into this game. I think, you're gonna, the Mike, I think you're going to see a lot more relaxed team because they were down there in the hole. I think they didn't want to have any turnovers. I think you'll see uh, Ryan Collins relax a little bit because now the pressure's off him from a field position stand. Second down and three, and the whistles again. Officials extremely busy early on. Good ball. Full start. Offense. Fourth penalty. At least they're consistent. <laughs> Good crowd on hand here at Lane Stadium. A sellout. They did not sell out against Boston College in the first week, and that was on national television, but the Canes bring out the fans. Hey, that's what's so wonderful about having Miami in the Big East. They have established. They're the queen of the fleet. Everybody else is now going to catch them, and I think that's a great uh, for competition's sake for the Big East Conference. The name Chambers comes into the game, split out to the right side on second down and eight. Collins back to throw again out of the backfield. He's got Harris. And Harris knocked out of bounds close to a first down, a little bit short. Brandon Simonis on the tackle. Harris, the fullback, an excellent blocker, but he can catch it out of the backfield. Well, I think that all athletes in that backfield, and, and what you're seeing right now is Ryan Collins looking like a, a drop back quarterback. He's rolled, he's done it all. And, so I'm, I'm encouraged by what we see here in terms of the Miami offense. Third and two. They're down to the 40. Rain continues to fall. Well, let's see how they do it. Matching power against power. Third down and two yards. That's Chris Jones in motion. Ferguson the call. First down. Brought down Lauren Johnson among those in on the stop. Straight ahead, power football play. Everybody just man on man. He still finds the hole, runs to daylight, and makes sure of the first down. He's not trying to break it, although he almost did because of so much uh, pressure by the Virginia Tech defense. They say that Ferguson has just scratched the surface. You can see his numbers left to get that 
milestone for 1,000. He's on his way with a couple of nice runs so far this afternoon. Quick drop for Collins. Incomplete. Green threw it behind. You tell Green could not hold on as the pass thrown behind him. But they're mixing it up nice. I think they have a lot of good sequence there. You see, Green has got to make this play and not be worried about anything else. Just make the catch, make the quarterback look good, take your five yards and move on from there. They're trying to run with the football before they have it. That's a drop pass. We can't have those things. If we're going to be a good football team, Miami Hurricane. Second down and ten. Collins chased out of the pocket by Brown and slips on the turf, falls down. J.C. Price was right there. Excellent pursuit from the Hokie defense. Cornell Brown, the man that flushed him out of the pocket. Now again, Cornell Brown is the man that makes the things go. And now, what you added pressure, the linebacker scrapes, and get people coming around on a, on a good stunt there. We got everything going for ourselves. This is where Virginia Tech excels. Their defensive line so strong. Cornell Brown, they say he's the best pass rusher here since Bruce Smith. And, uh, Right now, they're in a long passing situation. They're going to be a drop back situation. There's going to be a draw or a screen. Let's see what happens here. Third and 22. Collins has some time. Fires incomplete. Intended for the tight end, Tucker. Good coverage. Excellent coverage. Excellent coverage. He really threw the football to the tight end. It was not open. Here he comes. Now the linebacker from the inside is running right down the football field with him. Just wonderful coverage. He really wasn't open. And I think that Ryan actually threw the football away. Good field position. Let's punt and play good defense. Myron Newsom with the coverage. Chrissy back out. His first punt was a dandy. Larry Green, number seven back from Virginia Tech. Good rush. And Chrissy has to rush the punt. A poor one. And it goes out of bounds near the 30-yard line. So Chrissy struggles that time, but credit the hokey rush on that one. 15-yard punt. And Virginia Tech will take control. Just under five minutes remaining, no score in the first. There are a lot of reasons why we created Ford Windstar with over 40 standard safety features, including standard dual airbags and standard anti-lock brakes. Many reasons for giving Windstar secure handling and making it longer for a smoother ride. We could acquaint you with some of these reasons, but why wake them up? Ford Windstar, created for the most important people in the world. Stadium in Blacksburg, Virginia. Big East opener for Miami. Jim Druckenmiller, the quarterback, struggled last week against Cincinnati, but head coach Frank Beamer said it wasn't all his fault. But no one could make a play. Our wide receivers weren't making a play. We couldn't get a long run in there. So Jim, uh, you know, felt like, hey, every throw's got to be perfect. And and it in, the, in the end, it just we weren't a very efficient offense. I think Jim will come back. Uh, he's a tough guy he, on the outside. He's big and strong. But I'm telling you, he's tough on the inside. He's had a good week of practice. I think Jim will play well today. Frank Beamer said he was most impressed about Truck and Miller in all the time he's known him. No, so, no more than this week because of the way he handled last week's problems. And you can already see that he's adjusted mentally. He's ready to play. Thomas again with another big game. Another first down as he's approaching midfield. Boy, Dwayne Thomas has been super so far. Finally brought down by Eugene Ridley. Now again, they're running away from the overshifted defense, playing it very well. They're, they're calling the cadence on the line of scrimmage. They're calling the play there. 
And when you get Dwayne Thomas a hole like that, he's going to get some yardage. They've got that field position back that they lost on the punt exchange. They're right back just at minus a couple of yards, right where they want to be at midfield. 15-yard pickup. Thomas, eight carries, 58 yards already. And he goes again. This time, not a successful, still manages a couple. Ray Lewis comes in along with Burgess on the stop. You know, it's uh, it's a. I think the thing that uh, we've got to make sure here, Mike, as we continue to go, is that the checking off and knowing the Miami defense, Jim is knowing exactly what he's doing as a quarterback. The shifting, they're giving him all the mental and physical problems that they can possibly do. Second down of six. Drucken Miller looks, fires downfield. Bryant still got it. Oh, just shy of a touchdown. Great hookup. Bryant still hauls it in, a 47-yard pass play. They didn't play last week, shoulder problems, but he's their big play receiver. You're, and you're talking about against Carlos Jones. I don't know whether what happened to Carlos on that thing, but you know, Brian could go right by him. Great play action, holds it, nice delay, get it up in the air where a great athlete can run under it, and see Carlos is way behind him on the thing. Now it's a question whether you get in or not. And penalty mark is thrown on this first and goal. Now we're going to be able to see whether he got in or he bounced in, which is what the official call, which I think was a good call. Mid ball, illegal contact, offside, on the defense, half the distance to the goal line, first down. So they'll move it a couple of inches. The still was right there, but it was a good call. Yes, it was. Now this time, Virginia Tech, they were first and goal inside the 10 on their first possession, but couldn't punch it in and had a field goal attempt blocked. This time they need to punch it in. I think that you'll find that they're going to, this is something they can handle. This, this, the power of the offensive line is going to take them in right here. Thomas, touchdown, Virginia Tech. The speed of the Miami defense is counteracted right down there. You can't let him in there too often. So the 47-yard hookup sets up the plunge from Glenn Thomas and the Hokies get the first score of the afternoon. You talk about a crowd that's, that's excited now. They can't believe what's happening after Cincinnati last week. It's a great credit the way they're coming back against the Miami Hurricanes and the people down in Miami have got to realize that Miami Hurricanes got a ball game today. I'm thrilled to be here with it, Mike. Larson's extra point is good. Exactly what Frank Beamer wanted. Wanted to get the confidence going. And Virginia Tech certainly has that. The crowd is on its feet. A 7-0 lead for the Hokies. So the Nittany Lions and the Fighting Irish have given us another great college football game. And here are two tired generals looking for each other at midfield. Tough break, Joe. Yeah, I know. The tie's too much. It's nice, but maybe next time something in a crew neck. Uh, how do you think that'd be too casual? Collect a Burger King Legends of College Football Cup. Free when you upsize your Whopper value meal for just 39 cents. Look, Joe, it's not the end of the world. Next cup, think pastels. Buying a new car these days can get pretty confusing, especially with all the rebates, discounts, and special warranties. At Sanford Motors, Central Florida's smallest Jeep Eagle dealer, we make car buying easy. All our vehicles are clearly marked with one low price. There's no hidden costs, no dealer add-ons, and no small print. Just one low drive-home price. Take a short drive to big savings. Sanford Motors, 1792 in Sanford, Florida. Sanford Motors Jeep Eagle, where you'll get royal treatment without a song and a dance. Frank Beamer's Hokies had not scored a touchdown in the last two years against Miami, but they put seven points on the board. And nothing could come at a better time for this football team. Keep them excited. Here we are still in the first quarter. That dream has come true. They're ahead 7 to nothing. They're playing at home. And now the pressure is returned to the Miami Hurricanes. Last year, Virginia Tech had a minus 14 yards rushing against Miami. 
They've certainly been a little bit better than that here in the first quarter this afternoon. And there you see the scoring drive, the 47-yard pass play from Druckenmiller Miller to Still. That was the key play. I think one of the keys to the coach, now that challenging Carlos Jones, we're still, I mean, that, that's the thing that, uh, that kind of surprised me, the thing, and, and I don't, I still don't know what happened to Carlos. He must have got frozen in his tracks, but still can't run by him like that. He's the one returning starter back there. Yeah. Some say one of the best corners oh, yeah. in the nation. He's, he's a great player. Carson will kick off. Jones and Gator are back. Excellent kick. And Gator's not going to go anywhere. So Miami will take over at their own 20. Right now, let's go back to our Big East studio and John Sanders. Thank you very much. In the Dome, Pasqualoni decides to go for it in his own territory on fourth down, but Donovan McNabb is stopped on the option. Greg Sauer got him. That led to a field goal for Minnesota. Syracuse has answered with a field goal of their own. The game is tied 3-3. Let's go back to Lane Stadium, men. Taking chances early in some games as Virginia Tech with the 7-0 lead. First and 10 for Ryan Collins and the Canes. We got a cadence problem again. This has happened all quarter. It'll be the fifth penalty against Miami. And we still have three minutes left in the opening period. I think once one of the problems is that Ryan is checking off on the line of scrimmage. And uh, when you check off. reset the clock to 3.09. 3.09. When you, when you change the play, the cadence change, the snap count change, and the offensive line is being confused with Please what's happening right here. Please reset the clock to 309. 309. He won't say please if he has to say it again, I think. <laughs> 309 left here with the first. They're going to bundle up this afternoon. There's your penalties. That's number six on Miami. And it's been a cadence problem throughout this thing, and now you're first and 15 down in the hole. This is where you don't want to be, and that's happened to him three different times now in this in, in this first quarter. Carlos Joseph has come in now for Miami. He in the backfield. They had a week off last week, two weeks ago, beat Florida A&M as they continue to try to reset the clock. They are off next week and then play Florida State. But no question, you do not look past Virginia Tech in Blacksburg. Yeah, they're not off today, that's for sure. They've got to get on and get on fast. And importantly, it's the Big East Conference opener for the Canes. That's exactly right. Collins to throw on first down, looks downfield. You tell Green, he's got it. At the 45-yard line, Pearson Prelo on the tackle. But Green hauls in a 30-yard pass. Now again, uh, when you have a pass that comes in the middle like that, you've got to have the middle safety coming over to help out the cornerback on this football play. And uh, we just didn't have it on the thing because I think they got read up with something else. And it just can't happen. You can't do that against the great speed and the great cuts of uh, the Miami Hurricanes. Prelo, a freshman, that's a tough assignment. Green, one of the best receivers. Ferguson quickly hits Salonis. He reads him behind the line of scrimmage and loss of the play. Ryan Collins, the leader of the Miami Hurricanes. Butch Davis is pleased with his progress so far. Yeah, I think he's done an excellent job of accepting that responsibility. It's a new offense for him. Uh, he's doing exactly what we're asking him to do. He's, uh, he's, he's protecting the football. Uh, he's thrown three touchdown passes for only one interception. He's got charisma and some leadership in the huddle. And, uh, and he's doing a very, very fine job for us at this time. And that time he connects with Jermaine Chambers. Still short of the first down. Now, if you've noticed that uh, the eye formation is being disguised, they're showing you the eye, but they're moving into a pass formation, and it looks like they're going to throw the football to move it down the football field instead of stuffing it right down, down 7 nothing. It's interesting to see what uh, game plan they're going to go to here. There's Collins' numbers so far. They're in Virginia Tech territory, and this crowd is very loud. Third down and three. Collins fumbles the snap again, but whistles in another flag. 
They are really having their problems. Yes, they Central, sure. full start, offense. Now you have a third and eight. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, he's see, back. What, very obvious what's happening here. We've got a cadence problem. The center is not in tune with the quarterback. The quarterback expects the ball. He's backing out of there, and we're not getting the snap, and we're just having a lot of problem with the exchange because they had changed the play again, went to an unbalanced line to overshift. Coach Davis certainly not happy with the play of, in terms of Ryan Collins at the center. With twice now, he's fumbled the snap. That time, just pulling back. He was seventh penalty. Now a third and eight. Collins under pressure. He got it. Gets away, fakes, and falls out of bounds close to a first down. Newsom chased him out of bounds. I don't think they've got the first down. They've got to punt the ball away. I don't think he tried to reach for it, but he was out of bounds when he reached. So they're going to be short. Now he had the first down, but faked the pump and. He should have gone for it here, but by delaying right here, he's got the problem. Boy, Newsom made a great play. Oh, he had to keep yeah. an eye on Ferguson and kind of caught in between. I, I think, again, we're, we're getting everything we want out of the Virginia Tech defense. Now we're into a punt formation. They hurried it last time. Let's see what happens this time. Chrissy had a beautiful punt his first time out, and then just a 15-yarder second. Larry Green back again. This one, another short kick. <laughs> down at the 19 yard line. Virginia Tech will take over. Now let's get an update from our biggest studios. John Sanders, take it away. Mike, thank you very much. We go to Death Valley where Virginia's Mike Groh is the quarterback. He'll find Patrick Jeffers, a terrific catch just short of the goal line. Groh punches it over on the next play. They miss the PAT. Virginia leading Clemson 6 0. Like you have, there's a surprise brewing there. A 30 yard punt that time. Excellent field position uh, for the Miami defense. We've got 80 yards to go. That's where they want to get the Virginia Tech offense. Thomas, again, the call breaks. Another couple of tackles, and he's still going all the way up to the 41 yard line. What an effort from Dwayne Thomas. Not only is he giving a great yardage, but he's also inspiring everybody with the way he's running it. But they've run the same football play three times on first down and the overshift is what's causing the problem They're just overloaded over there it's a great call great execution by the virginia tech uh, focus earl little finally brings him down but not before a 21 yard pickup and this is a miami team that has given up much more rushing than they're used to Look to see last year in the app that yeah. they ran the football. Mike, the statistic you gave about minus 14 last year, can you imagine how good they feel, what's happening to them up seven, and the whole crowd do the thing? That's what you can't have if you're Miami. I'm telling you right now, this is time to get worried. You know, we're giving a lot of credit to Thomas, rightfully so, but the key really is the offensive line for the Hokies. I also think the game plan, you've got to give them credit to the offensive coaches because they're attacking it just exactly where they are. On the other side, I think you're going to find the huddle over there on the, the offense. You're going to see this cadence problem solved, and I think Miami Hurricanes will come out and be all right from now on. We'll get a lot of work done, and they understand what's happening. Coach Davis concerned, certainly with the play of his defensive line. And have, teams in Virginia have not a lot, have not a lot of success against the Hurricanes. 0 oh, and 20. And there you see Tech looking for their first win. They've enjoyed playing the colleges from Virginia. It's certainly still a long way to go in this one. The uh, the excitement I think here is uh, is being able to go to the weak side and run the football like they are on the open side like this is just a fascinating thing to watch and you've got to give some credit to Dwayne Thomas because he's picking the right hole and he's running over people besides and when he had the shot coming in like he did and still hanging on the football can you imagine what this doing for quarterback Jim Druckenmiller can you see how excited he is he knows that he's leading a whole football team now. And, this is the first time that I think that he's really knows that he's he's in trouble. And he is a quarterback and pulling him out of it with, with the check off that he has the right of He said last week, well right now. Nick, he said last week it was the worst he has ever played on any level. High school, Pop Warner, whatever you want to talk about. He just had a miserable. And nobody effort. argued with him about it either. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Brian Evans 
on the cattle play and gets maybe a couple of yards. Carlos Jones in on the stop. They've mixed it up. You know, Ivan Mazel, one of the great college writers, made the statement that Virginia Tech for backs, you know, you're just all over the place, and you can show that they can really run the football. Look how they're trying to run over and hanging on to the football. No turnovers were good. Here's the first quarter, and is it what we want right here? They have run the football well. They are the first quarter, and Virginia Tech leads it 7 0. Chilly afternoon, but the fans certainly warmed up, at least the Hokie fans, the way this has started for Virginia Tech. I don't think anybody's chilly anymore. I, I think this is exactly what they wanted. It's a, it's a dream come true. Everybody, Virginia Tech is playing football against the Miami Hurricane. Second and five. Truck and Miller. Play action. Looks downfield again. Bryant goes. Oh, he drops it. That would have been a clear touchdown. Right in his hands. That's a tough one for Druckenmiller. Now, something happened again to Kyle. It's, it's, uh, I don't know what's happening here. That's what it is. Eugene Ridgely slow getting over. Yep. No, if it was his assignment. Still made a beautiful catch earlier. And there you see. Well, it's a very obvious broken, broken coverage by one of them. His last TD catch against the Hurricanes. Dr. Miller pitches to Edmonds, and he fumbles the football. Miami jumps on top, but it looks like Virginia Tech may have recovered. You don't know. You don't know whether it's Earl Little on the last play. Again, remember now, this is a forward pass all the way. Good possession. Ray Lewis gets the hand in there. Yeah, he strips it right away from him. But uh, we ju he jumped right back on the football. Drop pass. This would have been a touchdown for Virginia Tech. You can't lose those opportunities when you're playing Miami. John Thomas with a four punt. Goes out of bounds near the 28-yard line. His first punt of the day. Struggles with that. Just a 24-yarder. You know, it's got to be the weather because neither neither team was worried about their punting. Everything was fine. All these years' experience. So Thomas goes to the sideline. Virginia Tech, though, still on top in the second quarter. We made history on the American road. Now we're looking to the future. Introducing the new Ford Explorer. The top-selling compact sport utility that has standard dual airbags, as well as the roomiest interior, plus the one with the highest quality of any American compact sport utility. The new Ford Explorer. Far and away, the best the world has to offer. The staff of Bill Seidel Chevy Oldsmobile Geo has served Central Florida for over 19 years. A lot of change has gone on in Claremont, but one thing is still the same. Our non-commissioned sales staff believes selling Chevys and Oldsmobiles is a profession. We don't shout or use gimmicks or wear fancy clothes. Good service starts with the same. If you're not satisfied, we're not satisfied. Come out to Claremont and see us. Bill Seidel makes car buying a pleasure. We'll be happy to serve you. Bill Seidel Chevy Oldsmobile Geo, Highway 50, Claremont. Virginia Tech leads seven. I think their head coach, Frank Beamer, knew that this was going to be a tough assignment. Miami may be one and one, but they are definitely still the Canes. You can say whatever you want to about Miami, but they're, they're good players that play when that ball is snapped. So first of all, you better have your toughness with you. And then second of all, defensively, I think it's don't give up the long play. You know, they're in a little bit different offense, uh, a little more two back. Uh, you know, you don't want that quarterback to get real confident. But uh, I think the thing, if you can just make them take enough snaps in a new offense, you know, you got a chance. Just don't give them the long play. After the 0-2 start, this would be the perfect way for them to get back in say the fans good graces and get their confidence back to beat a team like Miami. Yeah, and they've got the fans back with them and uh, they know that uh, they haven't given up the playing great football ahead 7-0. Play action from Collins looks downfield for Green. Green's got it. And taken down at about the 25. Prelude finally brings him down. But you tell Green with a big pass play from Ryan Collins. 45 yard pickup. And Green's a little shaken up. Now, again, we're talking about a true freshman playing against him. 
We're talking about when they're going to attack him, and they've done it right now. Antonio Banks out with an injury. And there you see Green's numbers. He has become perhaps their best receiver. Jeremy got a lot of the wattage, but Green very solid. Nowhere to go for Trent Jones. A loss on the play. <laughs> it's tough to run against this team. Well, I think, you know, again, the penetration, they 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 actually pushed the line back to the back, had nowhere to run. He had to go lateral on the thing, and then they have it. Tony Morrison on the stop. Loss of about four. The Virginia Tech defense feels something, knows something. They're playing with great enthusiasm and tremendous uh, execution. Uh, we're talking about now a four-yard loss, second and 14. Let's see what Ryan does here. Ryan's under pressure. Gets away from a couple. And runs out of oh. bounds. Jim Barron put some good pressure. J.C. Price finally hit him. And he maybe got back to the original line of scrimmage. I think, again, uh, Ryan Collins did what he had to do there. He had to get out of the pocket and uh, made something out of really nothing. He made about five yards on a football play that he should have... A little close to the sideline there. I was a concern whether they were going to call that thing or not. Newsom. He's the quarterback, and they should be leaving him alone here. Excuse me, Dick Newsom almost got a piece. Newsom has had a terrific afternoon. He's playing. He's playing, but he got to be careful of those because he should be calling them. You can't be hitting guys out of bounds, especially quarterbacks. They're trying to run out of there. Three wide receivers now in the game for Miami. Omar Roll puts out to the right. And the Hurricanes are going to call a timeout. They've Big got a play. Third Big play should call a timeout. Third and nine coming up. Certainly big play early on. Well, you're in. You. So we'll take a break. Still early here in the second quarter in Blacksburg. Virginia Tech trying for their first one of the year. Point two. Miami here in their conference opener. Trying again to be the beasts of the Big East. Coming up next week. This shows you why it's so important for Tech to win this afternoon because if they go 0-3 having to go into Pittsburgh where we will be next week. That is a tough assignment. Pittsburgh playing well. Well, I think that uh, it's Big East football, and that's what's exciting about it. That's exactly what we have right here. Third down and nine. The strength of Miami coming right now, that pass off. Collins, quick drop, dumps it off. Daft is the tight end, and he's got the first down. Big pickup. Newsom brings him down, but not before they get the first down. Now, Gerard makes the catch that has to be made. It's not a great pass, but he makes sure that he hauls it in and gets enough for the first down. He has to run behind him, hang on to the football. Gerard Dolphins make a big football, the biggest play for Miami in the game so far. Collins, 6 of 9, 138 yards. He's been impressive for oh, all the sure. ball. Oh, sure. On the carry, Trent Jones gets inside the 10. And this is where Miami excels. Six times this year, they've had first and 10 inside the 20. Six times they've scored touchdowns. Yeah. That is red zone efficiency. Now, I think that what we have to do is see how they can do against uh, the Virginia. That's the first time we didn't get penetration across the line where the back was able to run where he wanted to run and be able to cut it back. Newsom in on another tackle, but not before a good pickup. They have been perfect in the red zone thus far. Sledgehammer football by the Miami Hurricanes here. Second down and four. Trent Jones on a pick. Knocked out at about the eight. There's nowhere to go. Play will win on the stop. One of the things that you've seen, the adjustment, no more cadence, no more offsides, but they've stopped making uh, cadence calls or trying to change the football play on the line of scrimmage. And they ran right into the strength of Virginia Tech defense that time. Collins looking over for some answers on what to run on a third and four. Derek Harris in the 34 back in. I think you see Collins having a part of this football play. The quarterback himself will have some way how they're going to get the first down. Ferguson still on the sideline. Collins throws. Simonis looks like the interceptor. And he did. Brandon Simonis on the interception. The Tech defense comes up big again. Just, it's a poorly thrown pass behind him. And that's twice now he's done that. You end up. Uh, Ooh, that almost hit the ground. That's close. Uh, almost is a uh, bounce up. <laughs> Simonis has played well so far this season. I think the official. Oh, I don't know. 
That's very close. Yes. And uh, we we got people calling the play that were shielded from it. That's what happened. They had to make a call, and they did. Well, Simonis did a great job of picking it right up if it did graze the grass. They go inside a couple of yards. Parker's still going. Broke a couple of tackles, and the crowd loves it. Earl Little finally brings him down, but Marcus Parker with a great second effort. What I was talking about before, the backs are making everybody excited by the way they run the football, and they're running against the Miami Hurricanes. They're getting all the breaks and taking advantage of. And that's the first turnover of the game. And it was a big one as far as the Miami Hurricanes were concerned. And again, you saw Miami so good in the red zone. First time this season, they failed to get a touchdown once they're in there. Nine-yard pickup that time for Parker. Ken Oxendine has checked in for the first time. They don't go downhill here either. Not at all. Kenny's oh, excellent back. And there you go. He's got the hole, the first down, and much more. Didn't play in the first two games with a broken bone in his hand. Ten-yard pickup on his first carry of the season. Now, well, everybody's excited to have him back, and what a great way for him to introduce the season. They need players like him to spell Dwayne and uh, Kenny Oxendine answered the call. First and ten, moving out of the trouble zone. Here they are up beyond the 20 now. From Chester, Virginia, a sophomore who in limited duty last year, very impressive. He gets the call again, another hole. And perhaps a five-yard pickup. You know, Virginia Tech has some good talent at the skill positions. We said in the beginning, Dick McPherson, that they needed strong play from the offensive line, and they have certainly gotten that. Uh, even more than I think they hoped for. I mean, uh, and the offensive line is just going to get better because of the way they're playing. You can see the confidence coming out of the, uh, of the whole Virginia Tech organization. Look at the bench. You see it down there also. Look at the check. They're checking everything off, taking the time. Again, Jim uh, looks like a season in his third ball game. You know, poise is the word to use for the way he's handling himself. Jackson down with another big hole. Great fake from Druckenmiller. Freeman Mack in on the stop. And another first down. Now you can't emphasize what you were just talking about, Mike, the play of the offensive line. And they're doing the job in terms of taking people on, walking down seams, kicking people out. It's just it's just what you exactly what you want to do, run the football, and they're doing a fantastic job. On the outside, Oxendine really nowhere to go that time. Good pursuit as Russell in on the tackle. Juan Russell. This is a great mix-up, but, you know, nobody's making a living against the Miami Hurricanes tossing the ball to the outside because that's exactly what they want. The success of the Virginia Tech game is right at them, right up the middle, and try to find the hole and break it off. Pretty good numbers already. Seven yards a carry for Oxendine. And then you talk about Dwayne Thomas being a great tailback. And remember what Ivan Mazel said about these people? It's just the great running backs all the way, fullbacks and tailbacks. Jim Druckenmiller looks looked like the quarterback that he needs today. Out of the shotgun. Throws complete. Druckenmiller again. Brian Jennings the tight end. And they've got another first down. Now, watch the way the quarterback throws this football. And you see that's why they like it. Watch how he stands in there. Watch how this ball is delivered. He certainly has the, yep. the size and yep. the passing skills. 6'4", yep. 222 pounds. And this is the kind of game he needs against a nationally recognized team. Look at the numbers. The one was dropped. What would have been a sure touchdown. Yep. So he's been sharp. Again, Marcus Parker gets up to about the 45-yard line of Miami. Marvin Davidson on the stop. getting some carries. I think, again, they're faking the pitch to the outside, then giving it right up the middle, and everybody was running outside to get a hold of Kenny Oxendine, and again, a great selection. We're getting the things that we want from these people. Thomas was so strong early, now Oxendine and Parker getting it. Second down and four. Tech moving the football once again. Oxendine again. 
another first down all the way down to the 30-yard line. Earl Little brings him down. You know, Ricky Bustle, the offensive coordinator, is just having a great time here, just picking the Miami Hurricane defense ball. And what execution we're getting after last week. It's something that you can't even believe uh, that Virginia Tech can do, and they're just doing it great. Defensive backs are having to make the tackles here, running right by the linebackers. It's an amazing thing that's happening here. Uh, we're certainly glad to see it. That is an unbelievable statistic yep. when you're talking about playing Miami. This will uh, light up uh, everybody at the halftime across the nation. What Virginia Tech is doing here this afternoon. Oxendine this time, not a lot of room. Oxendine last year in limited duty averaged 7.8 yards per carry and starting off. And he's a strong player. So is the likes of O'Brien. Still, they've got good skill position players for Virginia Tech. Miami coach Butch Davis is certainly aware of that, and he knows guys like this can be extremely dangerous if they're given the opportunity. Well, I think they're very talented. Uh, you know, just looking at things that they've done in the past, I know that they've struggled a little bit by not having them in the game. And uh, you can't you can't take away your good time playmakers, guys that legitimately have a chance to touch the ball and, and turn short games into long games and medium games into touch games. Effectively uh, making a, a negative impact, and I know that they got to be excited about getting those guys back. We're going to have to do a good job in the second goal. Truckin Miller leveled by Swan Russell. Yeah, I'll tell you right now, Jim's wondering whether he hurt those Miami guys the way he lowered the boom on them. I, that, that's exciting. He is trying to show his own football team that he's tough. He'll do anything to win, and that's what they need down here in this tough zone. Now we're on the 27-yard uh, line. It's third down. We, we've got to come up with a real big play. Well, Sanders gets his own signs down here. John, <laughs> very popular in Blacksburg. Oh, boy. Still have over six minutes remaining. Third and six, big play. Chuck and Miller, Oxen guy can't hold on. Russell was right there. Would have been tough to make the first down anyway. But that's one you got to hold on to. But it's, it's again... Two drop passes is all that's happened. Kenny Oxendine tried to run with the ball, hurried things too much. You don't need to do it here. So a field goal, Adel Larson coming on. Now this is a big play for him because he's zero and three, and now he's got to get the football up. I think we have to watch the elevation immediately. And with the hash mark they have on the right-hand side with these people, I'm afraid of the hook. It's tough. It's a 44-yarder. Yes, sir. His career long is 48, but he's 0 for 3 this season. He's got it. This time, he's got it. He's got three points. He's called it, but yeah. I could see the, the, for the technique. Mind you, the Ryder Cup. He had that nice, easy swing. 10-0 Virginia Tech. Now you, again, you have to worry about the slippery grass down there, but everything is in the play. If you needed a big play, that's is when you need it. Now they got confidence back in him. The kicking game is established. They're playing defense. They're playing offense. We have a football game here, and all we are at 6:05 and a half, 10 to nothing. Larson struggled yeah, so far look. this year. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, look at him. <laughs> solid that man Adel Larson just kicked a 44 yard field goal this is when Butch Davis has got to go to work he's down 10 to nothing his uh, football team is a little bit in shock and they have no confidence in this level right now this 1995 football team has got to establish himself and they better do something before the half because uh, it's a critical time right now and Virginia Tech the whole organization the fans are pumped up and here we go the number one in the Big East Miami is a kickoff returns Tony Gator lets that one go out of bounds. They're actually number one in kickoff and free kick returns. out of bounds. The ball will be placed on a 35-yard line. Now they get a chance for a return here. Uh, Tony Gator did something that lets you kind of how do you know that thing is going to bounce <laughs> out of bounds like that? Uh, it's a 35-yard line. Free kick out of bounds. The ball will be placed on a 35-yard line. Right, so they'll, down. they'll bring it up to the 35. Yeah, an excellent. Field position. There's your scoring drive. It started way back on the four after Simonis's interception. Yep. Takes 65 yards to go. Miami Hurricanes. No cadence uh, in terms of the adjustments. Just straight football. They're not making any changes in plays on the line of scrimmage. Ferguson back in the game and it's got a big game across midfield. Still going. Finally brought down Torian Gray in on the stop. 
holes that have been found in the Miami Hurricane defense has been now found in the Virginia Tech defense, and you get a great back like this, and you're going to make positive yardage. Allen also in on the tackle, but not before 23-yard pickup. Now you're talking we went from a 65-yard to a 42-yard game. For, uh, we're just uh, we're just moving the football here in terms of plenty of time, 10 to nothing. Let's see where the poison is. Ferguson again cuts inside and has nowhere to go. Quickly, the swarming defense. See, it's a quick count offense, no checkoffs. They're just trying to pound the way right at them. Now they've got to go into the passing game. I think they're playing a little bit in the Virginia Tech's uh, hands here when they don't do something in over the overshifted uh, Virginia Tech front. Waverly Jackson with a strong play defensively. No pickup, second and ten. Drucken Miller certainly has to be pleased. See if they check here again. Ferguson to call in another hole. Gray tackles him, but not before another pickup that's close to a first down. Again, we're talking about a pass rush with second and nine. They open up the lanes and a good draw play, and everybody taking everybody on and just open up the hole. And I think we should have got a first down out of that football play, and we've got to run just a big football play now. Third down and one. The back has got to think first down and nothing else when they're in this critical area. See Chris Jones, number 84, one of the wide receivers. Backups comes in. Ferguson and Carlo Joseph are the setbacks. Ferguson, he might be short. Some big hits from Virginia Tech. I was already talking about the first down, and there were, you're right, Mike, big, big hits. And I was shocked that he didn't get the first down out of there. Frank Beamer likes that kind of defense. Uh, the hits by the uh, Virginia Tech people, it's just plain team defense, gang tackling, everybody in on the play. You give credit to it, it's a Virginia Tech hokey defense that makes the play. So let's see what Butch Davis will do. You're on a fourth down. And they're going to bring out the chains, I think. Yeah. It's a big call. 355 remaining in the second, down 10 nothing. I think it's kind of an easy call from the field position that he has. I think with that long distance, he's going to go for it if he has to. Let me see. It's just a little less than a yard. And Miami's going to talk about it. First year head coach Butch Davis, his team down 10 nothing. And their big East opener. They've got themselves quite a fight here this afternoon in Blacksburg. Mike Brain, Dick McPherson on hand. And we'll see what his call is. I think he's going for it. Now they're just trying to figure the play, right? Tech with the 10-0 lead. And the Canes with a big call coming up right now. Did Miami take the timeout here? Yep. That's Took the timeout to talk it over, huh? Their second timeout. Yep. Two head coaches again. We said this at the top of the show, Dick, that... They both said this is a critical game. It might only be their third of the season, but big game for both teams. Yes, it is. It becomes of any or all of the game without the express prior written consent of creative sports is prohibited. Just under four minutes remaining. Second quarter in Blacksburg. Fourth down, and that's how much Miami has to go. And they are going for it. Ferguson and Harris to setback. That kind of a game you got to go for. They've tried twice this season. Collins will run and will easily have the first down and more thrown out of bounds. William Yarbrough on the tackle, but a nice call from that man, Butch Davis. I think that um, it's, a, it's a gutsy call, but if it works, it works big, and uh, Brian made the most out of it. 16-yard pickup for Collins. Collins a little shaken up on the play. Ryan Clement is going to come in. He took a pretty good hit. And it appears to be the shoulder. Oh, it was a very legitimate play. Very legitimate call. 
And Yarbrough throws him down right on that right shoulder. Yep. So Clement, the sophomore out of Denver, Colorado, he got a little time in the Florida A&M game. A little different story here in Blacksburg. First and ten for the Kings. And in the red zone. And Ferguson with a big game. Walked down by Hank Coleman. This is the first drive that they've looked well running the ball offensively. They've stopped the uh, cadence mix-up. I think they've got everything solved. And big play for Ryan as he comes into the game because he's able to execute and get something the first play in the game. Working on Collins right now. Collins have played well, thrown the football well. He looks like you're right, Mike. It is the right shoulder that's hurting. Second and seven. Clements first throw, complete. Jeremy catches it, but he's completely engulfed. Larry Green, Lauren Johnson right there on the coverage. What an easy catch. Yeah, it's uh, kind of a funny call down here because they certainly weren't backing the people off any. You can see from that, the Miami coaching staff has a lot of faith in Ryan Clement. Let him do that in the second play he's in the game. Third and three, last time they were in the red zone. Virginia Tech came up with an interception. Ferguson the call. And he's close to the first down. He's got the first down easy. Brandon Simonis on the stop. But it appears Miami has it. So first and goal at the five now. Collins still with that shoulder. Again, great penetration by Virginia Tech. But Danielle picked his way very well. Broke back to the weak side and was able to get the first down. When you get that penetration, it's very, very tough to get a running offense going. It's credit Miami on that. Under two minutes to go, first half. First and goal with the five for the Kings. Ferguson again cuts inside and an easy touchdown. No one touched him, and Miami gets on the board. Now, Miami ran right into the overshifted defense. They've solved a lot of problems on the bench. It's a credit to the Miami Hurricane staff for the drive they have here. Watch the shift and blocking everybody down. Here's a nice guy rolling around, kicking it out. And Danielle just walks it into the end zone. And uh, great call, great block. They threw it on for the extra point. And it's a 10-7 game. Important possession for Miami. Down 10-0, and again with the injury to Collins, they don't miss a beat. Clement comes in and leads them into the end zone. We talked about 6.05 to go, 65 yards to go. They had to do something before the half, and they certainly answered the call. It is a brand new ball game, and now we've got to get this crowd excited again. That kind of quiet down. They don't bleed all the way. I think we have to watch what happens in this series. 150 to go. See Ferguson. Yeah. See what happens is they get everything overshifted. They're blowing everything to the side they want to go, and then he's cutting it right back. I, I can't emphasize enough that uh, they show great maturity in how they handle this thing. And then to put a second string quarterback in there and let him lead in there bodes well for everything. See Ferguson's numbers after the slow start starting to pick it up. And again, puts it in the end zone. Pruitt will now kick off for Miami. We'll see how Virginia Tech reacts because you know the confidence a little bit back now for the Hurricanes. I think that uh, this is great for them. And now what you're saying, Mike, is true. How do we answer the call? 150 to go. What does Frank Beamer do here? I think of what depends on where the kickoff return returns to and how much of a field we got to go before we can score. It makes to see what happens on this kickoff. Again, with Dwayne back there, anything can happen. But with the speed of Miami, they should do a great job covering the special teams, and especially on the kickoff. Dwayne Thomas, the deep back. Second thought. Oh my God. And it came very close. I thought, he, down I thought he touched that line, but I guess he didn't. So they'll take it over at the 20 yard line. They've got three timeouts remaining and minute 50. That was very close again. Yeah. What's that left foot here? See it? Cut right on the line. Is it? <laughs> yeah. The official right there. Yeah. He's saying he's just a nice boy from Virginia Tech. I'll give him a chance. He really didn't want to run it out. Now, the thing we've got to talk about, we've got a flag on the play. Three men on one side of the 
the kicker at the kick on the offense will kick over. Three men on one side of the kicker. What does that mean? <laughs> Al Hines will have to get an explanation. Yeah. So off the formation, they'll kick it again. Pruitt will go back. And Thomas will get another chance. Mike, we're talking about Frank has done a great job in terms of the clock management and timeout control. He's got 150 left and he has three timeouts. So anything he wants to do will be determined where they are on the football field. And I don't know exactly what the official was talking about with three men on one side there. But uh, he sounded like he knew what he was talking about, didn't he? <laughs> that was a scoring drive for Miami. Again, they changed quarterbacks in the middle of the drive. Ryan Collins hurting his shoulder. Clement came in, and we'll get an update during halftime on uh, Collins' injury. Coming up at halftime, as you see Butch Davis trying to get an explanation like yourself, Dick. No, no I don't think he's explaining. I think he's trying to coach up the official. What are, you, what are they talking about? I, I just don't. If somebody been offside, we might be able to help. So John Stanners will have our Big East Studios update with highlights from some of the games. Mr. Sanders will have all the details. You know, here we are with Miami, Virginia Tech, and who cares what's going on the rest around the country? We've got the game here that we're all interested in. It's, it's a tremendous place to be. Uh, this is College Town, USA. The view from up here is fantastic. We've got a great game going on down in the field. Your blood started going as soon as we came on campus, which is a beautiful campus here in Blacksburg. Thomas can't handle it on the bounce. Picks it up to his eight. Cuts inside, spins, and gets close to the 20, about the 19. And that's where Virginia Tech will take over. 146 remaining. Again, all three of their timeouts left. And Druckenmiller, who has looked sharp here in the first half, will lead the offense on the field. That was a bad kick. Made look, uh, look good when you try to pick it up on a thing. But I think you had a veteran guy in Dwayne, and he, Dwayne Thomas was able to pick it up and at least make it get back to the 19, 18-yard line. They send out three wide receivers. Cornelius White out there along with still split out to the near side. In the shotgun again is Miller. Quick throw to Still. And Still brought down in a hurry. Well, I guess Good that play from Holmes. That answers something. Frank's not going to sit on it. Here he goes. Kenny Holmes with a big play because Still had some room if Holmes didn't grab him. Great play out of the shotgun. <clears throat> they fake the sweep and then throw the great uh, screen out here. But uh, the speed of Miami has allowed them to get right to the football play. Ryan Collins, by the way, a sprained shoulder. He may return in the second half. Second down and eight. Wayne Thomas has a hole and gets up to about the 28-yard line. Ray Lewis on the tackle. Clock continues to tick. Crowd wants him to throw the ball again, a little restless. Well, I think they can throw the ball after they get the first down. Right now, let the clock run out and keep playing. Just to, they're doing an excellent job with what they have to do with to move the football. I think they'll make the decision if they get a first down here. There's your time remaining. We'll call it now third and three. He's got three timeouts. That's what makes a difference. Frank uh, knows exactly what he's doing. They are taking their time, however. Thomas breaks another tackle. Makes the move. Getting up there midfield. Tremaine Mack tries to drag him down and does at the 33 yard line. Another big game for Clay and Thomas. Now, this would help when you have three timeouts. He's in the driver's seat right now. 39 yard pickup. And Tech will call the first of their three timeouts. See, they didn't have to hurry anything. They've got two more timeouts left. Even though the clock is stopped because they move the football. This is just a great run. That's that's Wayne Thomas on his own. What we're talking about, what Butch Davis even himself talked about, big plays have to come from big people, and Dwayne Thomas is one of the big people from Virginia Tech. Jermaine Max Speed, the only thing that stopped the touchdown. And there's Thomas's numbers. Had that great year in 93, over 1,000 yards, 11 touchdowns. He was injury, injured last year, so hampered a bit. And it started off strong this afternoon. He's got 116 yards. On 13 carries so far today, actually 126, there's the numbers, nearly 10 yards a carry. 
Now they still have to move it in a little further to guarantee the three points. And I think that's what you're going to try to find them do. Uh, throw the football down to get it in field goal range and then go to the, for the touchdown from there. But I think they need at least uh, another 15 yards to be assured of a chance for a legitimate field goal. It's too far away. Right 19 seconds to go, two timeouts. Thomas, the senior out of Fort Myers, has really played well. And again, Virginia Tech has had in the past problems running the football against Miami. Who doesn't? Although this year the Hurricanes have been giving up far too much on the ground, according to the coaching staff. Can you imagine Dwayne Thomas, how he feels about what's happening here today? The Thomas family back there in Fort Myers watching this game, how they feel. Uh, this is uh, a dream come true for all of them. He's playing against the Miami Hurricanes, and everybody knows who he is in Florida today. He's had a big game in the first half. So first and ten. They're at the Miami 35-yard line. And you're going to see a draw or pass to get some field goal position. Justin Miller on first down to throw. Complete to Oxendine. He's going to try and run out of bounds and does at the 22. Clock stops at 11 seconds. That's it. Now they go for the end zone. Now they go to the end zone two times and still get position for the field goal. 17-yard pickup. They can throw the football any place because of the two timeouts. Oxendine is back in the ball game. And every time he comes in, he makes a statement as soon as he comes in. Dwayne Thomas makes the play, and they don't go down at all, hell at all when they move, move number 28 in. Ball now at the 18, first down, 11 seconds remaining. Throw it anywhere, all the time I get to As time, almost intercepted. Tremaine Mack was right there, intended for Cornelius White. That's just a bad throw. Six seconds left. Six seconds left, and now we're going to kick the field goal. Larson has connected already from 44 yards out. He had a 25-yarder block. Now, the thing we have to watch out, as far as Larson is concerned, to get the elevation so a guy jumping up in the air can't block it. I think the protection by that excellent offensive line of Virginia Tech is fine. And this will be a 35-yarder. Get the confidence from the last one. I think we're in good shape. No good. A little bit wide, so the Hokies come up empty. Strong drive. The Larson now one for three this afternoon. And he's one for five in the season. Huh? It was so strong on the 44-yarder. Yeah. He's very strong here. I just think he punched it away. And again, you know, you take a look at the strings. The strings right in his face. That's that's the worst way you want to kick from the hash mark. So that may have. Just pushed it a little bit off to the left. Yes, it does. Yeah. Two seconds remaining. I think the thing you, you got to talk about is that the snap was a little poor and you didn't spin the ball around where you're just hitting the ball and not the threads. And when you do that, you got all the things going. Now we're just going to run the clock out and uh, get the football played. Ryan Clements is still a quarterback. And uh, the word on Collins, Mike, that you just gave. Brain shoulder may return. Okay. We'll see how it plays out in the second half. Virginia Tech very solid despite missing that field goal. There's one guy who enjoys coming back. Former Virginia Tech star Bruce Smith of the Buffalo Bills. Enjoying the Hokies so the way they played here in the first half. Still looking for their first win of the season. Tech with a 10-7 lead over the Miami Hurricanes. Some of the reason to play. As we're going to give some highlights, Wayne Thomas had a great first half. Well, I think, again, right on the goal line, about a half a yard to go, he just leaps right in there, and the offensive line, again, moves the Miami Hurricanes out. It's a, it's what you needed, the first touchdown of the game, 7 nothing, Virginia Tech. It was 10 nothing until Miami finally came back. Danielle Ferguson on the TD run. This is the series that Miami looked so good offensively, 65-yard drive, and culminated with this cutback play. Excellent uh, offensive series. The only real one that they had. And by the way, Ryan Clements is the one leading them in. Ryan Collins injured his shoulder on this particular play. Yeah, but by the same token, it's a fourth down and one play. If you have to hurt it someplace, that's where to do it. And he played. He started off very slowly, but played well after that. He may return with that sprained shoulder. I think but the story of the first half is certainly Dwayne Thomas, 127 yards rushing. I think the story is the in the first half is the, is uh, just 
wanting, wanting, wanting to win this football game. And everybody in Virginia Tech is showing that. And they get the crowd behind them. So it's an exciting thing that's happening. What the only problem is two missed field goals. What really hurt this? And the Canes were in deep in territory, the red zone. But Brandon Simonis came up with a key interception that may have grazed the grass. Yes. Uh, and what happens if the referee behind the football play has to make the call, and he might see that the ball never touched the grass that we can't see. And Beamer, the last guy to intercept the Miami Hurricane pass for Virginia Tech here. By the looks of Frank Beamer, that was a long <laughs> time ago. But he's a happy guy right now. I'll tell you that. That was back in 1967 oh, when Beamer made that interception. My age, that wasn't too long ago, Mike. His teams have played well when they're leading at halftime. In the last two seasons, Virginia Tech 16 and 1 in games that they led at half. But this is a game that they should have had a bigger lead. Well, that's that's the key. Is uh, the field goal kicking going to destroy him? But you know they've got the momentum and the thing that they had by deferring the kickoff. By deferring the kickoff, they've got it right here. And now let's take a look at our John Hancock out-of-town scores, brought to you by John Hancock, official worldwide sponsor of the 1996 Olympic Games. Ready for the second half kickoff. Dane Pruitt. Underway here in the second half. Wayne Thomas at his own three. Juan Russell with a good hit. Knocking him down at about the 17. Just a note for Miami, Ryan Collins has not returned to the field yet as Pruitt goes back to get his team. So Ryan Clement. I think they know that uh, Virginia Tech's going to take the ball. They're keeping him in there as long as they can. We'll know when he gets down to punting time. But look at the speed of the coverage that Miami had getting down there inside the 20 to uh, stop them. Now we've got a drive here. It's going to be going a long way. 83 yards. Collins will not return is the word we receive. Jorkin Miller's numbers in the first half. How about a couple of passes dropped on him as well. And Thomas hops over for a few yards on his first carry as Cliff Jackson in on the stop. Interesting play from a power standpoint. They counted the thing and got the linebackers out of the play a little bit. A good four, four yard gain to start the first, second half here. Check that Tony Coley. He must be tired, Thomas. Well, he had some long runs. I think when you're playing from Fort Myers, Florida, you're playing the Maya Hurricanes, you don't have time to get tired today. He's loving it. Chuck and Miller to throw, looking downfield. Brian still just a little bit ahead of him. Good coverage that time from Carlos Jones, who was with him every step of the way. Boy, I like, I like Jim Druckenmiller Miller getting that football up in the air and letting the guy like Brian still go after it. That's, that's what you have to do. This is a big third down football play with the field position they have right now. They're, they're going after him. Virginia Tech is not backing off from the Hurricanes at all. They want this win. They're not going to sit on anything. Say what, Druckenmiller, for a first-year starter, for a guy that had one of his worst games ever last week, he's playing with a lot of poise and confidence. I think that's the key is what we talked about. Will he have confidence? Will he have time? He's had all of them. Third and six, he's in the shotgun. Good rush. He gets hit as it releases a catch. Cornelius White, no. What's this? Pitch and catch. Now they say, yes, now it is a good catch. It appeared that Miami stopped, but he's just down on the catch, so a completion for Cornelius White on the reception. I think he was so conscious of making the catch after the drops that he's had, he didn't do anything else. He could have got up and ran, but he, they've called a must have whistle must have blown there because everybody looked away. So a first down, they move it up to a 31 yard line. Chuck and Miller on his own gets level Tremaine Mack with a strong hit, but about an eight yard pickup that time from Druckenmiller. and Miller. You don't know what that does to a football team, though. You run that option, it puts a whole new perspective on what they've got to cover. He's not known for this. He's not exactly your speedster. Well, you don't have to be. You have, all you're doing is the threat of it. You saw the opening hole there. It puts a lot of pressure on the Miami defense. And Ricky Bustle is really mixing up the plays here well. And he's got to feel good about what he's doing also to help Jimmy Druckenmiller be a good quarterback. So a second and two is Virginia Tech once again moving the football early in the third. Thomas has got the first down. Ray Lewis on the stop, but they'll move the chains again. I don't know if I can ever remember a team running the football like this against Miami. 
certainly recently. UCLA was able to do it in that opener, but Virginia Tech has been impressive all afternoon running the football. The flex of the tight end out a little bit here, which makes it a little bit different, too, because it takes makes one of the linebackers walk out on him, takes one of the linebackers away from the run game inside, and they want to run inside anyway, so it's a very good move as uh, your tight end moves out. And they balance it up a little bit more. Now it's six on six, and it's an even man-on-man -man game. And we're up to the 43-yard line. Thomas again. And quickly brought down Antoine Russell right there to greet him. Maybe a yard or two. Dwayne Thomas doesn't delay at all. He knows he doesn't have much. Here I come, baby. I'm going to run over you for a couple of yards at least. And that's the thing that keeps the clock moving and keeps the ball moving. It's good size. Almost 200 pounds at 5'11". And there again, you see Virginia Tech, nothing last year on the ground, and they have just exploded here this afternoon. I think the formations help a little bit. The, the checkoffs, the, the shifts, uh, all of it's an excellent offensive game plan by the Virginia Tech. Second and seven, Druckenmiller on a nice fake under pressure, and Kenny Holmes can't get it, but Lewis comes up and throws him down. Big loss as Miami comes up with a big defensive play. Now, the guy that made a big defensive play on that thing was Carlos Jones. They faked the, the sweep draw, and uh, now they sort of stepped on, and uh, I think that Carlos Jones made up for whatever he did before. He covered him real well. Jim couldn't throw it, had to take the, uh, the sack, but he took it very smartly. You see the pause right there, and that just gave Holmes enough time. So many times the defensive lineman, they'll be, they'll be the first ones to tell you, you credit that sack to the secondary for great coverage. That's exactly, that, there it is right there. Right now, the key here is you don't have any turnovers to Virginia Tech as long as you don't are in good shape. Third and 18, quick pitch out to Edmonds, and he gets up near the original line of scrimmage. Ray Lewis in on another stop along with Marvin Davis. And it's punting time for Tech. John Thomas only one punt in that first half, and it was not a good one. A 24-yarder as Druckenmiller goes to the sidelines. Frank Green was playing that old-fashioned game, field position. Let's get a good punt, keep Miami with a long way to go with a second-string quarterback, and we're in good shape in this football game. That's a much better punt. Tony Gator steps back at his own 15. Gator goes the other way. He's returned one for a touchdown already this season. Flag on the play. Gator's still on his feet. Michael Williams makes the tackle, but again, a penalty marker. You know, they're going to call a clip here. They're going to call a clip on Miami, and they're going to be mad at somebody that makes a clip. But when a back runs back and forth all over the place and people turn, uh, you can't help but clip. And that's probably exactly what's happened in this football play. 43-yard punt that time from Thomas. Gator ran about 50 Jordan yards. Return. Illegal block in the back. Against the receiving team, a five-yard, ten-yard penalty, first down. It's about a 50-yard return. Most of it, though, back and forth, and they'll bring it back even further because of another penalty against Miami. Well, again, you can't really blame the young man that made the clip because everybody's turning on him all over the place. When you run the back a punt, get what you can and get out of there because we lost a lot of the yardage on that football play. Both these coaches pay a lot of attention to the special teams. Virginia Tech, they block so many punts, both on field goals and. And uh, you know, special points. teams win the close games. This is a close game. We've had two missed kicks here. And uh, so I think it shows that it's now 16. It would be 16 to 7 with just normal execution. And Miami's already blocked the field goal. We'll be back with more 10 7. Tech still in front. Identify yourself. You grab the bull by the horns, spit in the face of danger, throw caution to the wind, or are you a cornflake eater? No way. You plow into the flavor flexing up and atom taste of Wheaties, made with wall to wall, indoor, outdoor, toasty, tasty, 100% whole wheat. A whole mouthful of flavor. It's the whole enchilada. So for taste that tears it up, let's loose. Where's the pants? Try the over the top taste of whole wheat Wheaties. Mondays are dramatically different on UPN. All hands, race for impact. They're pulling us in. Spurting up. Witness the most powerful alien force ever encountered. He's just hitting us back harder. On a not-to-be-missed all-new episode of Star Trek Voyager. Tonight at 7 on UPN 65. Miami coach Butch Davis has had to change his quarterbacks, not because of ineffective play, but because of injury. Ryan Collins, sprained shoulder, happened in the first half, and he will not return. So Ryan Clement, who actually 
led them to their only touchdown today, although it was at the tail end of Collins' drive. Ferguson breaks some more tackles. He's still on his feet. Simonis knocks him around and finally taken down, but not before about a seven or eight yard pickup. Now that's the mark of a great back. Ferguson makes yardage all on his own. Big, big series for Miami right now. He's broken a lot of tackles. Excellent, excellent defense here. He's bouncing all over the place. Missed tackle, missed tackle, makes somebody else miss, and he doesn't stop driving. That's what makes the great back that Butch Davis is talking about that he is. So he's getting some terrific blocks from Derek Harris, the fullback. There's his numbers this afternoon for Ferguson. And the second of two. And the yellow flags fly through the air again. Miami's been penalized quite a bit all afternoon, right from the get-go. Yeah, you're talking ball. about Caden's problem. False start. Offense. They call it false start. But what he's, they're trying to check off again, and they have their success, and uh, the tight end jumped off that time. It's been guards, tackles, and tight ends. Saeed Tucker. Even the center was involved. Ten penalties for Miami. Again, Collins had his problems when he started. Settled down. Now Clement in the game. A little bit of difficulty. Well, they never really settled down. They just stopped calling the things. Now <laughs> they're going to the passing game. And I, I think uh, so they went right back to the quick count again. Clement will throw. Incomplete. Intended for Green. They're going to call interference. Larry Green on the coverage. You tell Green was right there and may have gotten pushed in the back. Well, I think we'll have to see if he came over the top of the ball or whatever. Interference on the defense. A spot foul. Automatic first down. Oh, you check it right here. Well, he certainly is over the top of him. And there was, there was contact, so it's uh, just as legitimate as, as it can be. The thing that I am seeing here is Ryan Clement throwing the ball to spots that somebody isn't really wide open. That's no. happened twice now to a young guy. Yeah. He certainly has got a lot of confidence where he's throwing it, I think. He's had some zip on the ball. Yes, he has. He's getting fortunate a little bit, but a first down. Coming again, pump fake. You tell Green downfield. Did he get it? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yep. He's got the one foot in. Yes, he did. Lawrence Johnson furious. He felt he was out of bounds, but a first down all the way down at the 33-yard line of Virginia Tech, a 38-yard pickup. Here's a, here's a shot from the end zone. We're going to be able to take a look at it right on the sideline. Everybody judge for themselves. Everybody can judge. Now, one foot inbound in college football. There it is. Good call. Good call. You know it's a good call because the official's calling on the Virginia Tech bench. They don't call them over there unless they're sure. Again, the key there is the one foot. In the NFL, you've got to have both feet in. So in the college ranks, just the one. And Clement, pleased with that. Ryan Clement, he, he's as happy as can be. Ferguson breaks more tackles. Finally, Torian Gray knocks him down on the secondary, but not before about a nine-yard pickup. You're seeing a young man oh, at quarterback that, uh, that is excited and gaining the confidence that goes. The, th the throw that he just made was just up in the air, and the receiver's the one that made the play. But the quarterback has got a lot of confidence on it. I'm just a sophomore. Now, this is the second offensive series in a row that they've done a good job. So we've got to make sure that the Virginia Tech tightens up right here. Ferguson thrown down. Cornell Brown in the backfield throws him for a loss. One of the best defensive linemen well, we're in college talk, football. Yeah. We're talking about Jay Ina. What's to happen? Jay has just let the guy come right in there. And uh, now he's going to try to find it, blame it on somebody else. But what we're talking about is great speed, takeoff, wonderful play by Cornell Brown. Brown inspired a bit by Bruce Smith's appearance. Brown certainly looked up to him. Brown, one of the great sack leaders in Virginia Tech history. Smith, the all time. Everybody guy. looks up to Bruce Smith. <laughs> Second and 15, they fumble the snap. Flags on the play. And the official's going to have to work this one out. I think we had some uh, defensive surge there that caused the exchange problem. Let's go back to our Big East studio and update with John Sanders. All right, thank you very much, Mike. We take you now to the Carrier Dome in Syracuse. That's Johnny Woodson trying to get his team fired up at the start of the second half, but a mistake by quarterback Gary Sauter. A costly interception is picked up by Daryl Parker. A 27-yard return back to the 17-yard line, rather 14-yard line. Malcolm Thomas will take it in for the touchdown run. They got the touchdown they didn't get before halftime. 20 to 10, Syracuse leading. Let's go back to Mike and Gus in Blacksburg. Thank you, John. Miami will hold on to the football. 
here in the third quarter. And they're trailing 10-7. Frank Beamer, steam being run upon. And he's not happy with that call. Well, I think that you'll find that uh, the defensive lineman, or if we can get this uh, short up again, the defensive lineman charge caused the exchange problem. And Frank naturally is mad about it because he felt that they jerked him offside. Carlo Joseph back in the game. Second and nine. Clement quick throw back down. Cornell Brown. He's come up big here in the last couple of plays. Well, I think he's uh, he's an all he's performer, and uh, he's he's big time all the way, and big people as make big plays, as Coach Davis said. Good rush from Yarbrough to put some pressure on. Well, they, they had an inside blitz and he had to get rid of the football, but uh, the guy was wide open. He just couldn't get it to him. Third and nine. Crowd on its feet here at Lane Stadium. Clement Newsom with the sack. Byron Newsom's come up with some big plays and a fourth down coming up for Miami. Now, I think what everybody here should understand is that Virginia Tech has not backed off at all. That blitz in, that coming after, they're not afraid of anything. Watch the backside pressure here. Now Ferguson has got to pick it up. He just Ferguson's missed got to pick up that outside guy. He's, he's worried about the inside blitz. He had he put the wrong check on. They're coming with corners. They're coming with linebackers. They're they're into it. So Pruitt with a 45-yarder. His career best is from 49 yards out. The call on this one, but it just sails wide. No good. Virginia Tech comes up with some big defensive plays, and Miami comes up empty. Now, we're talking about coaches daring to take decisions and helping the players become a good football team. They're not backing off at all against the Hurricanes. Frank Beamer pumped up. Tech still with the lead here in the third. was Clement. If you've been going round and round looking for the lowest tire prices, then look no more. Because when it comes to low prices, Tire Kingdom beats dealers, discount chains, warehouse clubs, everybody. Find a lower price and we'll beat it by 10%. Tire Kingdom has the largest selection of tires anywhere. So we have the tires to fit your needs and your budget in stock. So for the best tires at the best prices and a whole lot more, roll on into Tire Kingdom. Hey, stop rolling! Miami and a kicker throw it missed a 45 yarder looks perfect on the snap and the hold everything is fine the rhythm is there it's just a distance thing the ball is heading right for the thing but look at the wind take that well I don't I think it's the old left-handed hook off, the, off so? the kicker yeah that's that's a soccer style that's uh that's a soccer style kicker he came across his body with it that that's sudden like that it does that so that's what it that's what you're afraid of all the time I don't know if I've ever seen it that dramatic well, to get the win. See, some of my uh, slices would understand it very well. <laughs> so Tech takes over. First and 10 of their own, 28. Dwayne Thomas again. Here he comes. Close to another first down. Dennis Scott on the stop. Let's go back to John Sanders in our Big East studios for another update. We take you to Kentucky, and it's Kentucky on the option. Haskins with the pitch to Mo Williams. Somehow, he slices his way into the end zone. His third touchdown of the game. And that gives the lead 
to Kentucky, 21-14 at the half. That's it from here. Let's go back to Blacksburg. Mike and Dick. Well, Hokey down on the field. Looks like Mike buying chimp. Yeah, but the thing that we have to emphasize here that Dwayne Thomas is showing the way again. He's through there and he blasts the Miami Hurricane. What they're telling Miami Hurricane, if you're going to beat us, you better do. button on your bonnets because we're playing. Frank was talking about how tough Miami is. He's showing the Virginia Tech guys the tough also. I think that, you know, it's an amazing game, but speed is out of it. We're talking about blocking and tackling is happening here today. Well, Brian Chin, the senior out of Pittsburgh. Can't see exactly where they're working on. As Frank Beamer looks on, concerned. By the way, Thomas's numbers, 17 carries, 147 yards. Brian Chin has some words as he walks off. They're always glad to see a young man walk off like this. He's got to be out for at least a play so they don't have to take a timeout. He'll be back, and there, of course, see, just happened this week, the Liberty Bowl agreement with great, the Big East. Great news for the Big East. Great news for football players. Another bowl that the Big East players can go to. Everybody in the league is excited. They're about. in the alliance. The Gator Bowl gets the second team. Carquest, the third team. Yep. And now the Liberty Bowl. Memphis to Tennessee in December. What a great place to be. Glad you're going to a bowl game. Thomas gets a few yards. Congratulations to Commissioner Mike Trangisi as they secure another bowl bid. Tony Coley in on the stop that time, but not before they get the first down. Again, you get an experience back, knowing what he has to get for the first down, and he got it. Danielle Ferguson didn't get that thing done on the third down and one in the first half. Shows what we have. Be aware of what you need to keep the, the chains moving down the football field. 60 yards to go for a touchdown. That's what they have in mind right now. Drucker Miller to Edmonds. And Edmonds doesn't have a lot of room this time, maybe a couple of yards. But they blew the whistle. So whistle blown, no problem. Again, they're stretching the Miami defense out, trying to come underneath it. It's a good play as long as you get positive yardage out of it because it, it bodes well for the future because they're not able to get outside on it, but they're stretching them out with the fake. Second and seven coming up. Tech jumped out to a 10-0 lead. They've also missed a couple of field goals. One was blocked. Drucken Miller again in the shotgun. Hasn't thrown it all that much, but has been effective when he has. Fires incomplete. Intended for Jennings at tight end. Good coverage. Dennis Scott Ray Lewis in the vicinity. Tony Coley is down. Yep. Again, we're talking about the tight end going down on the plane hook. He's got his feet under him. The ball is thrown a little bit more to his left. I think that Jennings should be a little bit more under control as he comes under the thing. He should be able to make in those catches. The quarterback's got to throw it one way or the other where the coverage is. Uh, Jennings, with the slippery turf, I think what happened on that thing, it's kind of slippery and, and the muddy out there today. So the work on Coley, perhaps an ankle. Yeah. I want to remind you again, you can see Virginia Tech next week. This is why today's game is such an important game for the Hokies. Because if they ever lose this afternoon to go 0-3 into Pittsburgh is not an easy situation. I want to tell all the mothers at home now, Tony Coley is not worried about the injury. He's worried about whether he's going to be all right to play from now on. That's what scares him. He's not upset. There's no big pain there. And there's Ryan Collins yep. again with the shoulder sprain. Yep. Obviously will not return. Here's Coley has been told perhaps a cramp. I think Ryan Collins, one of the things, a big fourth down play that he kept that drive alive on. That he got the injury, so it was an out of bounds play, but very legitimate all the way. We're going to talk to Clement. Clement. I think that everybody talked. Butch Davis yesterday, Coach Davis was talking about what a great young man he is and how he's really leading the team, and everybody everybody wants it. But I'm impressed with the way Ryan Clements is coming in to get the job done. And let's go back to the offense. Again, Jim, Drucken Miller, third down and long, middle of the football field. Good field position. Now let's see what happens on this one. Two wides in the game. Third and seven. And he goes back in a shotgun. Plenty of time to throw the football downhill for Stone. Incomplete overthrew it. Carlos Jones with some excellent coverage. I think we're talking about third down and seven, and that going down downtown with the football play against the best defensive back. Now look how great Carlos Jones is. 
be able to make the adjustment there. That he actually outraced uh, still for the football. He got beat the first time, but he stayed with him every time since then. Well, he's settling down. I think that's why that's going deep on. He's settling down about 12 guys. He's just a little bit. And Thomas still he can. John Thomas gets it off. Tony Gaines going to let it bounce. And Tech will touch it. Miami will take over at their own 20-yard line. 37-yard punt for John Thomas. Just under five and a half to play. Third quarter in Blacksboro. Some people call this the 20-yard line. I call it the 80-yard line. 80-yard line's the score. It's a long way to go, Miami. 10-7 lead for Tech here in Blacksburg. Add Ethel and the whole family are visiting, and you get to play tour guide. Uh-oh, your car's in the shop again, and you need wheels. Headed for a wacky weekend somewhere? Whatever your needs, Budget has the car you need. Budget, a smart place to start. On the road or at home, Budget has you covered. The smart money is on Budget. The staff of Bill Seidel's Chevy Oldsmobile Geo has served Central Florida for over 19 years. A lot of change has gone on in Claremont, but one thing is still the same. Our non-commissioned sales staff believes selling Chevys and Oldsmobiles is a profession. We don't shout, we use gimmicks, or wear fancy clothes. Good service starts with the sale. If you're not satisfied, we're not satisfied. Come out to Claremont and see us. Bill Seidel makes car buying a pleasure. We'll be happy to serve you. Bill Seidel, Chevy Oldsmobile Geo, Highway 50, Claremont. 0-2 Virginia Tech with a critical game. Their third straight home game, a sellout here at Lane Stadium, and the fans have enjoyed it. They've led throughout. What they paid for is what they're getting. They have, they're competitive against the Miami Hurricanes in 1995. 80 yards to go, man. Clement will throw on first down. Looks downfield. Incomplete intended for Magic Benton. The freshman Lauren Johnson with some good coverage. I don't, I don't know what Magic was doing on that play. It looked like he didn't expect to get it thrown to him or something. It didn't seem to explode until the ball was no. thrown. Benton playing I'll tell you one first thing. Game. Ryan Clement will throw it. He gets back there and wings it. Yet if you're just joining us, Ryan Collins in the first half, sprained shoulder. He's done for the day. Second and ten. Danielle Ferguson quickly wrapped up Newsom again in the backfield. He has had quite an afternoon. I just uh, can't emphasize the speed and the way they're going after people. They're just pushing those offensive tackles all over because they're just trying to block them out there and they're just not shooting the thing off. Newsom, the junior out of Hampton, Virginia, has made a lot of big plays. And a third and 14 coming up for Miami. Once again, they're on their feet. Clement under pressure. J.C. Price with the sack. And a flag is thrown on the play. Oh. I was wondering what it possibly could be the official was throwing there after the sack. He's calling a hold in play, which will be refused, and Miami will be punting. There's no way that they have to discuss this thing at all. Well, this Virginia Tech defense is impressive. I'll show you the discipline of the Virginia Tech. They still look to the coach. Holding there. offense decline. Fourth down. Yeah. Now, again, we're talking about an inside pass rush because of the outside linebacker, the threat, the tackle they got. have got a tough combination to go, and they're really confusing the offensive line of Miami right now as to who they pick up, and we've got an awful lot of work to get done here. Right. We haven't thrown the, uh, defense or the offensive line will be working on this right now, talking over the sideline. Great, great field position will come out of this again for Virginia Tech. And Miami has to take a timeout. Tell you what, the Hurricanes got back the momentum at the end of the second quarter, but they've lost it here to start the second half. There's Larry Green back to receive. 
Nationals still in Miami territory. Again, they don't have to take a timeout. What they should have done, in my opinion, is let the clock run down and don't and save that timeout when they need it later, because that's going to be critical later for them with a 10 to 7 ball game. Just move it back five yards and punt it. Let's check in in our Big East studios. Another update with John Sanders. John. All right, there's life and death valley after all, especially on third down for Virginia at their own 29. Mike Groh looks deep. Patrick Jeffers at the other end. Great catch. Nobody will catch him. He dances into the end zone 71 yards. Longest touchdown of Groh's career. The surprise continues 19-3. Cavaliers. Let's go back to Blackbird. Virginia football having a good day. Tech right now with the lead and looking at some excellent field position potentially as Chrissy's going to punt from deep in his own end zone. Big Russ just gets it off. He'll get at his own 44. And Green finally knocks out of bounds at about the 34 yard line. 34 yard Tucker line. Tucker in on the stop. Again, tremendous field position. They're playing that game and playing it well. 35 year, four yards for a score by the Virginia Tech. 36 yard punt 10 yard return and they've got it they're going to mark it down with a 35 as Druckenmiller Miller comes out once again 418 to play in the third it's a big test for the hurricane defense right now excellent field possession for Virginia Tech I formation they're going to power away out of eat up the clock Reverse. Here's the reverse. Brian still's got it. He broke the one tackle, but really doesn't have anywhere to go. And Excellent defense. On the play. Excellent defense on that football play. They, they defense it well, forced the man to the sideline, and ran him out of bounds. Well, Lewis a little shaken up. That is the last guy Miami wants to see shaken up. Their defensive leader. Tell you right, right there, Lang does a good job forcing him outside. And strings it out so everybody can get back to the football play. An amazing thing how that Lewis can get all the way over there from an inside fake to begin with. Excellent football player. It looks like he'll be right back in. He'll just go to the sideline for the no-charge timeout. Sort of record last year. Their leading tackler this year. Again, a Butkus Award candidate. One of the premier linebackers in the nation. So second and 11 coming up. Frank Beamer is, uh, can't get over how he is attacking this football team. Not, not giving him anything to him. Drop the Miller himself, and he gets up to about the 29-yard line. Twan Russell on the stop. Drop the Miller very good at the play fakes. Play, I also think that, you know, you, you get the fullback that's a good back, and you, there's another option play which really puts pressure on him. Does an excellent job in disguising what he wants to do. I think that he's got great poise and it can't be any better. But again, third down play here. They're going to power it at him on the play action. Third and three. Oxendon is the tailback. He gets the flip. Lewis on the pursuit slows him down. Dennis Scott on the tackle as well. And everybody on the Miami defense brings him down. Excellent pursuit. Now we're going to see if we are going to try a field goal with the goal for it on fourth down. Big decision by the coaches right here. Well, they lose a few on the play, so a fourth and sixth would be about a 48-yarder. Oh, boy. Timeout taken. That's what you call defensive pursuit. I think that, again, there's, there's nobody better than Ray Lewis, and he's back in the football game, and everything is there from that standpoint. It's crunch time, decision time for Frank Beamer right here. I think the play that you have right here is a drop back pass. Let the kid try to hit the man in the open field on a hook and take it from there. Uh, one of the things we option play you, they lost some yardage on the thing, which took them a little bit out of field goal range. I think you'll see that Frank will go for it here, especially with a one for three field goal kicker. The one he made, however, was from 44 yards out. And again, he has kicked a 48 yarder in his career. That's what this one would be. But he's, he has struggled overall today. I don't think, uh, I think you've got decent field position. I think what you have to do is Jim Druckenmiller, if you believe in him, give him a shot here right now, and I think that's what's going to happen. That 25-yarder, to be fair, was blocked. No, he's going to kick. Yep. Yep. I saw Jim shaking his head. It didn't look like he was too happy with it. So Beamer showing some faith in Larson, yep. the senior out of Norway. 
he'll be a Scandinavian after this one if he misses it. 48-yard <laughs> attempt. Again, to the way from the hook, and let's see, the flag is dead. So this is a big kick. Snap is good. And this one not even close. So Tech comes away empty. Third missed field goal of the afternoon for the Hokies. Let's take a peek at uh, exactly what the snap looked like. Let's snap see what the fine. snap of the hold is, looks like. Here it comes. Perfect. Put the ball down. And he's kicking into the threads, but it's a long kick for the young man. Well, he moved it just in time. Yep. He just, uh, that's just not a good kick. Yep. You know, we were asking the young man to kick a long way there. I would like to see Jim had a shot at that. One, but that's second guessing. Not, not what we're here for. And he has it. Ferguson, the throw, has got some blockers ahead of him. And holds his way up for maybe three or four yards. You know, Danielle Ferguson is making yardage where there is no yardage. And uh, I think that uh, bodes well for Miami as they try to get the thing down pat. It's 10 to 7. Plenty of time left in the ball game. I think what they need now is a good offensive series. Settle down. Don't throw the big bombs. Just be consistent. And I think uh, we need that out of Miami on this drive. Rich Davis, who has two Super Bowl rings and one national championship as an assistant under Jimmy Johnson, looking on second and six. Clement will throw under pressure. He's hit. Fires. Tucker, the tight end, has it. First down all the way to the 43-yard line of Virginia Tech. Prelo on the tackle. Well-designed offensive play, putting a double bite on the corner man out there. You got a man in the flat, the man on a, on a corner cut. And he chooses the up-front man, and they put the play right behind him. 22-yard pickup. Uh, he got whacked after he released. Now, again, Miami's in excellent field position. And let's see just exactly what kind of a offensive theory they're going to use to try to get the ball in the end zone. High formation. Ferguson stopped at the line of scrimmage. Almost gets a couple after the second effort once again. He is tough to bring down. Simona's in on the stop. They've got an overload of that line. They've got an overload in the line and just penetrating tremendously well. Uh, excellent run defense by the Virginia Tech Hokies. Here at Lane Stadium in Blacksburg, Mike Green and Dick McPherson, along with our producer Paul Carson and director Jimmy Edwards. Big East opener for Miami. Tech is 0-1 in the conference, lost here to Boston College in their season opening. Second and nine now for the Hurricanes. Ferguson immediately brought down J.C. Price and William Yarbrough right there, and they congratulate each other. I don't think I've seen the Miami Hurricanes challenged defensively by any team like Frank Beamer and his football team is doing today. They are going after him with everything they have. They know they've got an inexperienced quarterback in there. He doesn't have a chance to read and check off because of the Cadence problems. Just, there's just too many red shirts around the white shirts. Look quickness from Yarbrough to make a great play. And here we go again. Big third down. They've had a lot of them. Tech has come through on most of them defensively. I think that now you're going to see Ryan come doing a better job because I think they'll be just dropping back and throw. This is what he can do back. He's got plenty of time. Fires downfield. Intended for Yattel Green, but way over his head. Dorian Gray with some fine coverage. It looked like a uh, broken pattern there. I'm, I'm impressed with the young Butch Davis, the way he's keeping his poise in the sideline. See, he's running an inside route here, and it's way over his head. I don't know whether it was supposed to be a... A streak or an outside cut, but it certainly wasn't where, it, where he ran it. Yep, because Clement was definitely downfield. So every time the tech defense, you think they're bending a little bit, they come back and bite you. Well, again, we've changed the field position around now. Chris is going to get the ball down there. Can, can Miami keep them pinned down there to keep attacking them? As long as they do that, they're going to be all right. High snap. Larry Green once again back. This is a nice kick. Nice punt. Nice punt. Funny, somewhere inside the 20 yard line. So Virginia Tech will take over at about their own 13-yard line. Final minute, third quarter. Butch Davis's Hurricanes still trailing 10-7. That a 37-yard kick, but perfect placement for Mike Chrissy. 93 yards to go. Where are they coming from? It's awful hard for Virginia Tech to do it against the Miami Hurricanes. 
So from a field position standpoint, down three points, but they have the field, which is exactly what you needed with a close ball game like this. Can they keep it? So this is a big series as far as uh, Virginia Tech is concerned. At times, both teams have moved the football pretty well, but the defense at both ends, both Miami and especially Virginia Tech, uh, have come up with a big defensive plays when needed. I think that, uh, I think, quite honestly, Miami's got to run the ball a little bit better if they're going to really say that they're a good offensive football team against Virginia Tech. Wayne Thomas, three yards. James Burgess finally brings him down, maybe a five-yard pickup. As you see the clock ticking away here in the third quarter. Thomas, the workhorse, having just a fantastic afternoon. I think the offensive line, congratulations to the offensive line coach, I mean, and the offensive line, because moving Miami out like that is something that uh, is very, very special. we got to make sure everybody understands that. And that'll be the final play of the third quarter. Virginia Tech with the football and the lead. 10-7 on their home field. Once you call the car, there's three bears. Right. The daddy one, the mommy one, and the baby one. Uh-huh. And then Goldilocks found some porridge. Right. The daddy one was too hot. The baby one was just, just white. And it, don't move your lips, daddy. Okay. And then Goldilocks woke up and, uh-oh, the end. back for the fourth quarter of that Virginia Tech Miami game. First of all, let's take you to the Carrier Dome, the battle between the Big Ten and the Big East. And the Gophers down 27 to 10, trying to get back in it. Greg Nelson is their receiver. Greg Sauter, the quarterback, a 13-yard strike, and that does cut the lead to 10. They are in the fourth quarter as well. 27-17, fourth quarter action next from Miami and Virginia Tech. Gentlemen? Just said it to me. Thank you, John. Start of quarter number four at Lane Stadium in Blacksburg. Cornell Brown has made some big plays for Virginia Tech, so he deserves to get a little rest and get some ice up on that knee. And uh, well, they, uh, they hope that they get a lot of rest because they got to move the football. Second down and five. They got to get it out of there so Miami doesn't have that threat. Juckin Miller goes into the shotgun once again. Double tight end. Edmonds with a nice game and a first down. Double tight end and dress that defense, and they certainly found the hole. Ridgely with the tackle. Big first down for the Virginia Tech. Again, they had him overshifted the flank aside. They gave it off with a fake out to the outside and just hit the weak side of the football play with a double tight end. Masterful call. Great execution. Yeah. First and ten. Edmonds and Thomas, the entire backfield run the ball well, but they've had a lot of room. Oh, yeah. Thomas, this time, not a lot of room. Kenny Holmes in on the stop. They're eating up the clock. They're attacking. You can't do much better than that. And uh, they're, they're hanging on to the football. We can't have any turnovers by either side. It's a critical time of the game. You've got to be able to execute and do things the right way. They're getting field position back here now. The one turnover was a Ryan Collins interception. It was costly because Miami was in the red zone. Yep. Brandon Simotis with the pick. Second down and six. Thomas and Edmonds of the setback. Druckenmiller looks to throw. Fires incomplete. Intended for Edmonds out of the backfield. I think he was just a little bit off on that. I think Edmonds pulled up the way he should pull up, so he didn't run out of bounds, and I think the quarterback felt he'd be a little bit closer to the sidelines than he was. So another big third down play coming up. Opening minute here in the fourth quarter, 10-7, Virginia Tech in front, and a third and six. Four wide receivers now in the game for the Hokies. Michael Williams and Jermaine Holmes split out to the near side. 
Duncan Miller under pressure. Got some room to run and falls down. Ray Lewis gives him a whack. I don't think he made the first down. He should have dove forward for it. It's very close, but it appears aware. he may be short. Yep. I think he made the right decision to run for it, but he's got to dive. He's got to get the first down. He's got to dive straight ahead and get everything there. He's got to take it. Lewis had a running start running at him, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. So they'll bring the chains out. And there are stats after quarter number three. Wow. The rushing yard is just, just that's hard to imagine Amazing. doing that kind of damage yep. against Miami. Yep. Miami's passed the ball well. Collins threw some nice passes before getting hurt, as you see, just a little bit short. And Clement also throwing the ball. But it hasn't resulted in a lot of points. So a fourth down and about one. John Thomas will come out and punt. So Frank Beamer with the lead does not want to take any chances and give Miami excellent field position. Tony Gator will be back to receive. Thomas set to go. Gator, as we mentioned, already has returned to punt for a touchdown, a 46-yarder against Florida A&M. High snap, but Thomas handles it. Low kick. And it takes a Virginia Tech bounce. Boy, does it ever. Rolls all the way down to the 13-yard line. John Thomas with a nice roll. He certainly does his job. Early fourth quarter. Virginia Tech leads 55-yard punt for John Thomas. Failing deep in their own territory. Coach Butch Davis knew it was going to be tough. Knew he had certain keys that he had to have this afternoon to beat Virginia Tech. We have to be able to effectively run the ball. Even though uh, they're an eight-man front concept team, they'd like to discourage the run. I think we can't allow it to be a throw it 35, 40 times of a ball game type of a situation. And I think we got to play well in the special teams. It's something that we take a great deal of pride in. we got to make some things happen special teams-wise. Special teams, Virginia Tech puts Miami yeah. deep in their own territory. And it's going to throw on first down, complete to Yattel Green. Who gets up near the first down, knocked out of bounds by Torian Gray. I'm impressed now with uh, the way this Clement man throws the football, but a difference maker in this game is what the punter just did. He completely turned the, the field position around, and uh, now they've got a long, long way to go. But they certainly get off to a good start trying to move the football down the field. You know, when you talk about matchups, so often special teams is the last, if you ever talk about it, but how often does it make the difference in a football game? For so many times. So many times, especially the fourth game. This is where it all matters. Ferguson, a couple of yards. Still plenty of time. 13 minutes remaining here in Blacksburg. You know, I think that uh, the offensive line coaches of both football teams, Doc Kehoe and J.B. Grimes, because both lines have played, in my opinion, outstandingly today. When you take the pressure that they've had against that Virginia Tech team, you've got to give credit to the offensive line of Miami. So Ryan Collins watching as Ryan Clement directs the Hurricane offense. Quick shot under pressure, gets rid of it, complete to Derek Harris. Short of the first down. Derek did what he had to do. He made the bad catch. Clements did what he had to do. He get, had to get rid of the football, and it made something positive or a very negative thing that was happening. Pressure once again there from the Virginia Tech defense. Well, again, as they're just, just throwing everything in the kitchen sink at him, and you got to hand it to Ryan Clement, a brand-new young quarterback. Slippery field. Torian Gray almost came up with a sack. Clements did a good job spotting Harris under duress. And a third and five. I'm not sure he spotted it. <laughs> We're awful lucky that he got it off to him. I give him the benefit of the right, doubt. Yeah. And there you see the difference first half, second half. Defensive reign. Clement. Quick throw. <laughs> Almost intercepted by Newsom. Had it in his hands and dropped it. Yeah. He's had one of the game, best games of his career. Where is Newsom from? Is he from Florida? He has to be from Florida the way he's playing. From Hampton, Virginia. Hampton, this close. And he's close. He came close to a huge play. He's from the south, at least. That was uh, 
Now again, now let's see what this punter can do in terms of changing field position. Because we're just changing the ball. We'll see what happens if Virginia Tech and where they get it from. Tech again. Excellent in terms of blocking kicks. They put so much pressure on, he doesn't have time to really unload on it. That coming. Fuck! They got it! Michael Stewie falls on the football. Yep. They got yeah, three kicks last week. Amazing. What Frank Beaver's football teams in terms of blocking kicks? Amazing position. Angelo Harrison, the man to block it. Oh. You knew they were going to put the pressure on. Since Frank Beamer arrived at Virginia Tech, that's the 45th block the Hokies have had. Sure, sure. It isn't anything unusual. They know what's happening. It's tough to defend against. Then last week, they blocked the field goal attempt. They blocked an extra point. They blocked the punt. Now they've got to do something with it here. They've got to do something with it. Great field position. Special teams has done it for them again. Two big special teams play. First and goal at the eight-yard line. Edmonds gains maybe two, quickly brought down. That's the fifth straight regular season game going back to last year that Virginia Tech has at least one block kick. Uh, you know, it's an amazing statistic, but by the same token, you saw how he reached in for it. They're extremely well coached, and they drill and work on it. It's paying off when it should pay off. Nobody needed it any more than they needed it here today. But as you say, they've got to punch it in. They've got to take advantage. Second down and six. Second and goal from the six, we should say. Wayne Thomas goes nowhere. Marvin Davis quickly wrapped him up. You've got to give credit to the poise of Jim Druckenmiller, how he's checking off the football. Everything's happening good. It just didn't just didn't break because the penetration was there. Watch the, watch the Miami defense with the counter series coming back. The back, they're just not cutting off the backside. And they've got to do it because they've got great speed and tenacity on the Miami defense. Third down play. Four wide receivers come in for Virginia Tech. Third and goal with the five. Thomas is the lone setback. Shotgun shoes. Jumping Miller fires. Complete, but well short. Ray Lewis right there to stop Ryan Still after he made the reception. Yeah. And it's going to be fourth and goal at the three. This is a tough call. But he's going to bring out his kicker. They've got to go for the points. Third and absolute. fourth and goal is absolute. difficult. What happens? He takes. They've got the score now. And, and let me say this to you. Uh, the, this, this young man has to get this field goal. I can't, I can't ever remember a coach having so much faith in a kicker as Frank Beam is showing here today. And he's uh, had a tough afternoon. Yes, he's had a tough afternoon. He's had a tough year. Not a great year last year. I think that this uh, this guy has got to be thankful for the coach that really believes in him and get this thing done. And I know that he'll put this one through. This is a 20-yarder. Then he missed from 25. That one, however, was blocked. Yeah. He's missed from 48-33. The 20-yarder is, is nothing more than an extra point. There's only over here the sidelines. Should be a excellent football play right here. But the smart call, still so much time, 10 minutes remaining. And he puts that one through. Yep. Adam Larson gives Virginia Tech a 13-7 lead. The block punt, the key. Virginia Tech forcing the turnover. And there's your score. The Hokies lead it over the Hurricanes. Exactly 10 minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter. In a sold out. Lane Stadium at Blacksburg, and Virginia Tech desperately needing that first win. Lead it now 13-7 because of this field goal. Excellent snap, excellent hole, excellent distances. Hard to miss those, and he did a great job on it. The mission is loud and clear, Miami Hurricanes. You've got to get to the end zone. And if you get in the end zone, you've got a chance to win this game. On the other side of the ball, Virginia Tech has got a keep out. A long way to go. Let's see what happens here. Going out of the end zone, so we're all right, no problem. Going to start on the 20 yard line, middle of the field, 80 yards to go. Larson comes up big, doesn't give Tony Gator a chance to return, and that's been instrumental. Again, the Hurricanes came in number one in the conference in kickoff returns. There's your scoring drive, again, because of Angelo Harrison's block punt. 
a short one, and they finish it off with just three. Let's give Miami a lot of credit defensively. A couple of times, Virginia Tech had excellent field position. Miami defense bent a little, but they did not break. Well, you've got to remember now that they've got three points in the second half, and so the Miami defense has really settled down as to what's happening. Now can they do it offensively? An 80-yard drive. Haven't had one yet today. Ryan Clement, the quarterback, on first down, fires downfield. Complete. Jamie German Jamie. with the long reception. A 42-yard pickup. I tell you, there's some great athletes on both ends of the ball. Great throw, great catch. It's uh, it's almost uncanny the way they're able to pull these things off. Uh, and, you know, you don't know where the free safety is to help the guy on this football play. So German with a big reception. And now let's take a look at our John Hancock out-of-town scores brought to you by John Hancock, official worldwide sponsor of the 1996 Olympic Games. Time and again to throw on first down. Omar Roll with the reception. Maybe an eight-yard pickup. Larry Green on the stop. It was 80 yards. Then it became 39 yards. Now it's 31 yards. And second down and two. So uh, Miami is doing what they have to do, but they also have to get the ball in the end zone. A couple of times they have been in the red zone. But Virginia Tech's defense has stopped, including one time Brandon Simonis an interception of Orion Collins pass. Second and two. Harrison and Ferguson the setbacks. Ferguson has the first down. Yarball brings him down, but not before they move the chains again. One of the best to see football plays block well today. It's a one, one man, one hit for a first down on second down and two. Now the, now the yardage gets a little bit tougher, 26 yards in. But again, go back to the stat you were telling the people about when you started this thing in terms of how many times they've scored inside the end zone. Red zone. Inside the 20 on a first and 10, they were 6-6 six for six all touchdowns prior to today. Yeah. And Virginia Tech has stopped that. Torian Gray almost the sack. And Coleman can't hold on. Casey Price forces a fumble, but it goes out of bounds. It'll be Miami ball. Great pressure from Virginia Tech. Uh, you know, you talk about pressure. It's one red shirt, two red shirts, three red shirts, ball being fumbled out of bounds. That doesn't do very much good for a young quarterback. Mrs. Clements is worried about her son, 16. <laughs> a host of Hokies almost grabbing hold of Clement. Very elusive, however. Broke two tackles. Now watch the poison. See how he comes back from this. See if he's going to be jittery. Or is he just going to settle in and, t and throw the football properly? Loss of four on the play, so second and 14. They got him off schedule, which is what they tried to do. Clement avoids the tackle, and it's complete. Well short of the first down. He answered my question. He had pressure, stood right up, and threw it right in there. Yatil Green with another tough catch in traffic. Johnson and Gray in on the stop. Hey, Yatil Green, does, he's had a couple of catches where guys surround him. And this is one of them. Yeah. It's not, it's not a hard thing to do, though. He's coming back to the football. There's no problem there. Although that time they were a little bit further off yeah. than I originally thought. He's practically wide open on that. <laughs> third, <laughs> third and six. Clement under pressure, flushed out of the pocket. Gets rid of it. Ooh. Oh, Harris can't hold on. Incomplete. Derek Harris had it in his hand. I thought Derrick was going to walk in. I couldn't. Yeah. That evens it up. Two drop passes for touchdown. J.C. Price again with big pressure. I mean, Ryan Clement is, uh, I'm impressed with the way this young man is operating. Here again is a good call by these people. He's going to go for the first down. That's not only a first down if he catches that, that's six points. That's it, yeah. Fourth down and six, and they're going to go for it. Just under eight minutes remaining, fourth quarter. Hurricanes trail 13-7. They're coming, they're coming. Clement, under pressure, fires downfield. Green can't hold on. As the defensive pressure forced Clement to throw it perhaps a bit early. Yeah. Virginia Tech football. Again, 
I think he had to get rid of the football, just get it up in the air. I think he threw it just a little bit too far, not allowing a great high athlete to jump up and get the football. Now let's credit the freshman, Lauren Johnson, with some good coverage there. Yes. Now they moved him, you know, moved him right back to where he could handle everything. Great, great credit to Lauren on that play. Dorian Gray and William Yarbrough with some pressure on the blitz. Now well, Miami Hurricanes have got to strengthen the defense, keep them down, pin down inside. But uh, Virginia is looking to, out of the eye formation, going to run it powered right at him. Wayne Thomas with a big hole. Dennis Scott in on the tackle. Marvin Davis also. Oh, I like the way he's running with a 13-7 lead. He's, he doesn't give any quarter. He gets everything he can straight ahead and hurts people as they're tackling. Virginia Tech has never beaten Miami. 0-12. They've been trounced the last couple of years in terms of offense. They've not done a lot of scoring. But they've got a 13-7 lead right now. Six-yard pickup on the play, second and four. Thomas again. And maybe a couple short of the first down. Ray Lewis, long two yards, three third down and three coming up. Ray Lewis, a typical performance. Butch Davis has seen his team hang around. They've had some opportunities squandered. 6.52 to go, two timeouts for each football team. The clock becomes awful important in this situation we're here right now. Another big first down is big for Virginia Tech. And this is a big third down. Three yards to go. They kick it out. Wayne Thomas, good pursuit. And he goes nowhere. Ray Lewis with a super play. All-American. All-American play to stop him inbounds on that play without a first down. One of the premier linebackers in the nation. What we talked about before, you can't run outside on these people without holding them in there because you've got an All-American linebacker that comes all the way from the inside and makes the play, and he loves it. So on fourth down, John Thomas to punt again. Tony Gator is back. We also have Trent Jones back. Gator the deep man. Thomas gets off a nice kick. Gator backpedaling. Has to go all the way back to his 18. Starts all over again. Has some blockers. Up to the 30. And brought down there. 548. Instead of an 80-yard drive, this time they've got a 70-yard drive. So Thomas does his job. Miami gets the ball back. A little under six minutes remaining in Big East Conference play. And right now we're talking defense just one more time. Do it for us now, defense, and we're going to be fine. We can take the ball the rest of the way. This is a big series right here. And Love it. Under pressure right away. George Del Rico. Flag on the play. Apparently not. Pardon me. Del Rico with a big play. You know, uh, I can't get over the bravado of Bud Foster and Rod Sharpers. The way they're going after these the Miami Hurricanes. They've got a young quarterback in there. They've got them jittery. And they're just attacking, 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 getting them off balance. A lot of guys. They might need two series now. Nine-yard loss. Second down. Clement fires. Incomplete. Intended for the tight end, Tucker. He had him. He had him and just overthrew him a little bit. Throw it up in the air a little bit. Let Tucker get it. Simonis, the linebacker, with some good coverage. I think that, uh, I think if a little soft to touch by Ryan Clement was in there. I think they had what they wanted. He, uh, Tucker had a beat, but you had, he made it a pinpoint pass. You couldn't get to it. So third down and long. I said they only needed one series. I don't know. I don't know if they're going to be able to hold up. It's going to be interesting to see what happens here on this football play. Once again, they're on their feet at Lane Stadium. Third down and 19. Clement fires downfield. Intercepted. William Yarbrough with the pick. Yeah. Got a fight back there. Got a fight. Don't. Omar Rowe was the intended receiver, but Clement overthrew him. Again, we had that deep metal man was where he was supposed to be. We got a flag on the play here. After the interception, an illegal block and a back by the intercepting team. First down. 
they're moving the ball back so it isn't as, as tough as it seemed because they've lost a lot of field position here tell you what you look at the interception Yarbrough comes up with it for Larry Green with some excellent coverage I think that the ball was overthrown for one thing but they were playing the deep pass third down and 19 there was somebody open across the middle of the thing I think the kid just wanted to make the big play all at once but again the ball is on the 26 yard line there's 455 to go can we eat up the clock and help out defense one time I think that's the key and can the Virginia Tech offense blow them out of there and I think we're going to be playing run all the way There still is a lot of time. Both teams have two timeouts remaining. They'll take it at their own 26 after the penalties walked off. And he acts him down. He's wide open. Tries to cut back inside. Finally slowed down at the 32. Big play from Ken Axon down. It's amazing. Three entries, three big plays. Kenny Austin got his back and he gave him a great lift. One thing you noticed, he turned back inside to keep the ball in field and keep the clock running. 40 just yards moving it up. up. Oh, yeah. Amazing. 0 oh, 2, Virginia Tech. Look at the fans. This is one of the great things that's happened to Virginia Tech football. And. Uh, They've, they've given the fans everything they want. We haven't even got the final score yet, but they've given them everything they wanted right now. He still needs some more points with a six-point lead. And to get him on the Miami Hurricanes is a very, very tough thing to do. Hoxton down again. Goes nowhere this time. Stopped quickly by Marvin Davis. And Nelson Smith in there. Now the clock is your best friend. The clock is your best enemy. Everybody's coaching up a storm right now. This is the critical time. Coach Foster and Coach Shoppers. Bud Forster, the co-defensive yep. coordinator. Yep. Clock still moving. Second and nine. Double tight end. They go inside this time. And maybe a couple of yards. They undress that defense a little bit with that double tight end, which allows that fullback. That's the third time they've run that football play with that gap there. Brian Edmonds just didn't have a lot of room there. So he had a lot of room, but somebody sealed it off fast. <laughs> That's the Miami hearing. Just, again, you've got to admit that they've settled down tremendously well. It's just a question now whether Miami's going to have enough time to move down the football field. But everything good is happening as far as uh, the strategy that Virginia Tech is doing. They're eating up the clock. It's down to just about three minutes now. Big third down and five. Duncan Miller kicks it into Edmonds. And he stops short of the first down. Miami defense comes up big again. James Burgess and Ray Lewis in the vicinity. You can't, you're talking about a screen, a draw, a counter football play. Wonderful call. See, because it slows down the rush because it makes these people be very, very sensitive to what's happening. Usually a trap that goes along with it, but what happens is a great Miami linebacker is Phil so beautifully. Burgess and Lewis, two excellent linebackers. Butch Davis is going to watch Donald now, Larson try another field goal. Now he's going to put the game out of reach with this one right here, and he's going to be a hero for him. It's a 42-yarder. He's yep. two for five today. He's hit one from 44 yards, but he's missed easier ones. No good. Had some distance, but he's wide right. And Miami still alive in this one. 2.08 remaining, fourth quarter in Blacksburg. Virginia Tech holding on to a 13-7 lead. The Hurricanes have the ball. You remember now there's a snap, there's the hold, and then the kick, and don't blame it all on the kicker. Let's watch the holder on this thing. He gets the football, watch his hand come off the ball just prior to the kick. Plus, he doesn't turn the laces around. Makes it very, very tough on the kicker. I don't know who to blame, but there's more people in the wrong here than just the kicker. Can we get the action? Mark Larson furious with himself. John Thomas, the punter, he's the holder. And here we go again. Miami with the football at their own 25. They trail by six. Ryan Clement fires. 
incomplete. Tucker to tight end. Knocked out at the 31. Picks up maybe six yards on the play. George Del Rico knocks him out. Ryan Clement has played the entire second half. Ryan Collins, sprained shoulder in the first half, has not returned. You got to give George Del Rico credit for getting across the football field with a tight end like that, with all the great run support he's given all day long. Another, another outstanding linebacker like Ray Lewis for the Miami Hurricanes. Exactly two minutes remaining. Virginia Tech is led from start to yards to go. Clement complete. Simonis right there on the tackle. Carlos Joseph on the second. It. It's going to be short yardage, I believe. Just narrowly missed the first down. He has always the spot. Get him up over the ball. And third down. Third and certainly less than a yard. Get your quarterback seat. Just take it right there. Okay. Clement fires cross field. Yatel Green has the first down near midfield. Clement to throw the football. That amazing, is amazing from a timing standpoint. He doesn't worry where it's going. He's letting it fly. 14 yard pickup. Stop the clock. 129 to go. And we're just about with 50 yards to go to get in the end zone. And everybody knows what they have to do. They have to get in the end zone and kick the extra point to win this football team. They have two timeouts remaining. Omar Roll checks in. He split out to the right side. Clement under pressure. Looks, fires, complete again. You tell Green another first down up to the 35-yard line. And more importantly, he gets out of bounds. 121. 121 and 35 yards. 16-yard pickup. First and 10. The way they've moved the ball is, is tremendous. They had a, a blitz on that time also. The zone coverage behind it. Climate under pressure. Incomplete intended for Magic Pet. A little too high. He would have been out of bounds, most likely if he held on anyway. Well, I think it's nice to get rid of the ball. We didn't use much time. We took, what, we took nine seconds off the clock and the second down and ten. With no sack. Much smarter than what uh, he's done in the past. Virginia Tech led 10-0. Early in the first half, Miami came back, made it 10-7. Second half field goal by Larson. And that's your score. Miami has never led in this game. Second down and 10. Clement quick drop throws to play. And he runs out of bounds at about the 28. Third down and two, and the ball is out of bounds. 106. An excellent throw over the head of a linebacker there. I don't know if we can get the thing on it, but it's great. Great spot throw, excellent cover. And you tell Green coming up with a big reception, one right after another. He's a nice target to hit out there, and, and excellent receiver. He's going to get a lot of them during the year because of that. Green at six foot three, he's got eight receptions. Third down and two. This time Ferguson, and it's going to be very close. He got to go for it. Didn't make it didn't make it it's going to be close but I'd say it's about fourth and inches that they've got to make up here with 57 seconds remaining yep. so the officials call timeout for a measurement now the Ryan Clement fourth down play was an excellent call with Ryan Collins that I don't see this young man being that same kind of quarterback I don't think we can get a boot off the thing, but we could get some kind of a play action to make it effective, I think. Coming up, we're going to have our forward player of the game. As your inches. Fourth and inches. Virginia Tech, when they've needed to come up with a big defensive play, they've done it all afternoon. But there's none bigger than right now. No, I just, if they ever stop them here, with these over 50,000 fans, I don't know what's going to happen. It must be 50,000 the way this place is packed today. Sold out Lane Stadium. Ferguson and Joseph are the setbacks. Ferguson the deep back. Ryan Clement over center. Fourth and inches. And got Joseph has got, got the first easy. down easily. I think, again, a great call. The clock has stopped, but he's still going to take a timeout, huh? 
Hawk is stopped with a first down. Clement going over to talk to the officials, and Miami will call their second time out here in the half. They have one remaining. I think they gave it to the best man coming in over the top, just exactly what they should do, because they've been such a tailback-oriented thing. One of the things that I think they should have done with two timeouts here, try to get a play run with the clock stop so they still have two time. Now they're down to one. In his defense, they don't need a timeout uh, for a field goal because they got to go for the touchdown. So they have one more thing. Now they can get everything settled down. What kind of a drive they're going to have from 25-yard line on in? And they've got to go for the end zone, 50 seconds, plenty of time with two timeouts. There's your time remaining. If you're wondering, you join us late for why Clement is in the game. Ryan Collins sprained shoulder in the first half. Clement at times has looked good. They just haven't been able to punch it in in the second half. I think that Clement, if you take a look at him as a quarterback, he's done everything. That, he's done nothing to hurt them as a, as a quarterback. He's done things to help them. That's encouraging. And he's thrown under a lot of pressure. He's been whacked around in the, in the backfield all afternoon. And, you know, the only turnover he had was the big deep throw, which turned out just as good as a punt. Uh, from, they were lucky enough to have that thing, but there was no run back with a penalty. The ball game is right here, ladies and gentlemen, just the way you want it. 50 seconds to go, 13 to 7. One is going to win, one is going to lose within the next 50 seconds with 25 yards to go. Miami has it at the Virginia Tech 24. First down and 10. Time to throw. Incomplete intended for Green. Throw it short. Larry Green in on the coverage along with Torian Gray. Second and ten coming up. Well, again, that's an experience showing up because they go into a man-to-man -man coverage here, and we had some great athletes down the football field that we just never had a chance to look at. Which Davis just his third game as head coach of Miami. Taking guess right with the call, Ryan Clement will get it there. He's not reading; he just throwing his spot. Clement under pressure, flushed out by Coleman, and he's sacked. J.C. Price comes up big again, although Coleman was the man that forced him to make the run. Rock continues to roll. And you see Butch Davis screaming and finally gets the timeout. That is their last timeout. That was Miami's third and final timeout of the game. I can't... Uh... Just watch how he comes in, how he comes in for the for the hit. He can't be running around against this wide rush that they have. He's getting hits from all over the place. Now that's about the third one that he's made the same way. Well, Price gets the sack, but Hank Coleman is really just as responsible for it. I think that you know one flushes, one hits, one hits, one flushes. It's team defense, well coordinated, well drilled, and Ryan Clement felt that. Now. What happens here, we've got no timeouts left. We're down in a critical area. And what happens if the ball is completely inbounds, they've got to hurry up and get up to the football. And that's what hurts them doubly. So what the defense from Virginia Tech has to do is keep them on the football field, and they've got the game won. Just don't let them in the end zone. Keep them on the football field, and they'll win the game. The ball is all the way back at the 34, so it's a third and 20. Sold out Lane Stadium. They've watched their Hokies lose their first two games both at home. They were very embarrassed with last week's loss to Cincinnati. And they played a team this week that they had never beaten. 0-12 against Miami. 29 seconds left. Again, Miami out of timeout. Everyone on their feet. Run it downfield. It's complete intended for Tucker. Just threw it a little far and fourth down coming up. It's where he had to throw it. It's where he had to throw it. Now, they've got time to complete the ball in the middle, run up and stop the clock. So they can throw it anywhere on fourth down. Don't just throw it out of, out of out to the sideline. Because they've got time. They've got to make sure they complete it for a first down. And they've got to get up to the 14-yard line. Right. It's fourth and 20. Right. I think they've got to keep both backs in, help protect them, and let the wide receiver athletes. Bob, oh, my goodness. Virginia Tech will call a timeout. That's their second this half, so they have one remaining. 
Wow. That's a that's a huge break for Miami. A huge break for Miami to have a chance to bring a young quarterback over and tell them exactly what they want to do. Guess they want to make sure no mistakes are made here. Set up the defense. That's obvious. Yep. I mean, I think it's obvious what they're doing, but I also they're giving a tremendous life to Miami for the young quarterback. I think they're a little excited down there, don't you? <laughs> Well, I, I, hey, all I know is I love Virginia Tech and I love Miami because they're playing this game the way it should be played with everything they've got. We're down to the last play as far as Miami's concerned or they've got a chance to get in the end zone. Now they've got a tough call to make, but I think the key to it all is don't just think of the outside. You can throw it anywhere. Everybody run up to the ball. All those things can be coached up because Virginia Tech called timeout. And uh, I know they had a lot of wonderful things to tell them, but they helped Miami. Fourth down and 20. Miami with the ball at the Virginia Tech 34. They trail 13-7 with 23 seconds left in the game. Time it back to pass. Fires downfield. Throwing a plate intended for Green. Oh. No flag on the play. Well, let's see if there should be a flag on the play. Lauren That's Johnson, good. the freshman. He'll never have any bigger play of that in his life. Look at him. Look at him run. Here it comes. Here it comes. We got to remember that both that ball is thrown up to anybody, not just him. They both had a chance for it. I think that's a good call by the official. There's certainly contact there, but Johnson, what was so important was he turned around and he made a play for the football. And with 17 seconds to go, Drunken Miller will just fit on the ball, and Virginia Tech will have their first ever victory over Miami. And that one will do it. Frank Beamer. That Frank Beamer said it during the ball game. This win will be will cure 0 2 very, very fast, and it's cured right here today. The greatest win, in my opinion, that Virginia Tech has had since I don't know when. Congratulations to them. Tough luck to the Miami Hurricanes and Butch Davis. He's having a rough start, but I guarantee you he'll do a great job there. It's a wonderful thing that's happened in this beautiful countryside right here. Congratulations to you all. So after going 0-12 against Miami, Virginia Tech with the victory. Here's your final score from Blacksburg. Our fourth player of the game will be Wayne Thomas. 24 rushes, 166 yards. Brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? Let's go to our Big East Studios and John Sanders.